Godwinson Live News Alerts. This one's a fucking wild ride, what can I say? If you don't know, you should know. Nick, and I say this with a 100% sincerity, Nick Fuentes will be a future President of the United States. I say that without any irony. Nick Fuentes is going all the way to the fucking top. I, I kneel. I kneel, Fuentes Sama. You have won, sir. You have won. There's no going to be any Kino Casino cope on this one. When we see a winner and a victor in action, we give them the clap. Bravo, Nick Fuentes. President, it's some point in the future. Maybe not 2024, but definitely at some point in the fucking future, Nick Fuentes is going to be president of America land. Why is he sounding so sincere and convinced of Nick Fuentes becoming a future American president? We'll cover that. We'll cover all of that. And then we're going to go into the exact reason why the Kino Casino didn't stream last night on what was arguably the biggest night in Nick Fuentes news ever. Literally ever. It's a bit beyond, you know, eating a French fry gay. Oh, look, he's looking at Constance on a bet. This is way up there. This is top of the news agenda of all time greatest Nick Fuentes crazy moments to cover on a Kino Casino show, surely, surely. This song has a special relevance later. Okay. Okay. So, few days ago now, but the, you know, the news is still as fresh and as exciting as it's going to be, even delivered now. Nick Fuentes, leader of the American race, was spotted in an airport alongside Kanye West. Kanye West had been invited to Mar-a-Lago, Trump's estate. He was invited for dinner at Mar-a-Lago. All eyes were on Kanye West, so it was almost perfect that Fuentes was spotted in shot, carrying the luggage, but still in shot, still a known entity. That was great PR. And who was the person that was in charge of that PR stunt? Who was the Machiavellian mind behind it, wielding his little vault there? It was the person that's running Kanye West's campaign. That person is Milo Yiannopoulos. Milo's back. And bizarrely, more powerful than ever. Milo Yiannopoulos, the man who made Game Again. The man who, essentially, if we really think about it, is 100% responsible for getting Donald Trump elected as president in 2016. Milo Yiannopoulos is now the puppet master for Kanye West's presidential campaign. What? 
is what I hear you ask, because Milo's supposed to be irrelevant, dead and buried. He had to skulk into the shadows when he was defending paedophilia, and how all people sh should be, like, victims of paedophilia or something, he was saying. It was total fucking insanity, and he said it on the drunken peasants, which is even more of an insane nub to this storyline. But there was a time when Milo was really at the fucking height of things. He was going on, like, Bill Maher. He was on every sort of mainstream news platform shilling for Trump. And now, he's managed to claw himself away from that irrelevancy. So, if you don't know, you should know. We'll show you sort of the level that Milo was at. When Milo was, like, really in the gutter. That's if it's still up. So, Milo basically ran onto YouTube, tried to reinvent himself, do some stuff on his channel. And Milo was pretending to be that doctor who was, uh, who accused the judge, Judge Kavanaugh, of uh, a rape back in the 80s. What was the bitch's name? Dr. Christie? Okay. This is what we wanted to show you. This was the sort of what Milo was doing with his time after he'd fallen so completely from relevancy. That's what Milo was doing. I don't drink, just to say. <clears throat> I don't know who that is. This was a serious, apparently, political operator back in 2016, but he'd fallen from such relevance that he was doing shit like this, right? You might know me from lying to the Senate. <laughs> you might be wondering why uh, a woman of my age has such a squeaky voice with this high intonation and vocal fry. But that nice young man from Cory Booker's office said it makes me seem really cute. <laughs> ha ha ha, my aching sides. As you all know, I have been the victim of disgusting and hideous violations that have ruined my life. So that, that's what Milo was doing, right? But there was a game changer in Milo's uh, irrelevancy, his, irre his wilderness period. And that game changer was an interview with Nick Fuentes. We'll just show you a brief fucking glimpse of that. That's if it's still on YouTube and it's been taken off. But basically, Milo interviewed Nick Fuentes. And at the time, all of the American Firsts were like, what the fuck? It's Milo Yiannopoulos, like prolific, profound homosexual, degenerate man who's defended paedophilia, uh, been cancelled completely. So because of the worst thing that you could possibly be cancelled for, right? Um, but Nick Fuentes told everyone to trust the plan. He said that Milo Yiannopoulos was working on the website, the America First website, and he was basically pulling the strings. He was the puppet master behind, like, America First's online infrastructure. And we just had to trust the plan, folks. Trust the plan. And in the meantime, there have been various people who haven't trusted the fucking plan. Various people who've made their name not trusting that plan. People like PPP, Worski, Cog, and various other people that A-Log America First and Nick Fuentes. Trust the plan. The constant refrain that was given out for, for years. Trust the plan. And here we are in the space year 2022. And that plan has finally come to light. Now we can see exactly where the plan's going. And all of those A-logs, the Jaden McJudases of the world, have to cry into their pillow of a night time because they no longer have Wednesday's love. They're no longer going to be on Cozy TV with Kanye West and Vice President Donald Trump.
We're gonna go with this one, I think. This flashlight can burn through anything. This new military flashlight is basically a lightsaber that fits in your pocket. But be warned, this 600 pound flashlight is not a toy. It's so powerful that it can not- This is an advert, by the way. Even I was trying to advertise a lightsaber to me. The flashlight projects an incredibly powerful beam of light reaching up to three kilometers. It was designed specifically for British Special Forces to view enemy positions Why would I need this? combat missions in enemy territory at night. The flashlight features state of the Tonight we are getting a new window into former president... So I wanted to just show you what this is called. Trump hosted... Uh, we'll turn off the captions. For some reason the captions have auto-loaded. Trump hosted Holocaust denier along with Kanye West at Mar-a-Lago. This is the CNN take. And it kind of covers the timeline of events and, and really gives the take. It re the CNN take is here. Now, <clears throat> many people wouldn't lead with the fact that Nick Fuentes is a Holocaust denier. Many people would say that's a mere footnote in his thing. But regardless of who was alongside Kanye West, they'd be treated like this. Make no doubt about it. If it was Destiny, if it was Sargon, if it was Ethan Ralph, if it was Andy Worski, if it was Jim, if it was any Nick Risotto, if it was any of them, they'd have this exact same headline, okay? So it... It, it's not necessarily Nick's fault. Highly controversial figures. Just days after he announced his 2024 run for the White House. Let's bring in CNN National Group reporter Maeve Reston. Maeve, we have... Ma Maeve's got the, the scoop. Maeve has the scoop. Trump hosting rapper Kanye West, or Ye, um, at Mar-a-Lago. See, I thought it was Ye. Ye. Because you say Kanye West. Kanye West. Kanye West. But it's ye or yay. Yay. Down in Florida. As well as an outspoken Holocaust denier. I will have nothing Holocaust. said about Maeve. Maeve is not a slatternly woman. Maeve would pay for the Toby Carvery in a heartbeat. I'd be happy to spend £30.50 pence on a slap-up succulent Chinese meal for Maeve. About this dinner. So this started bubbling up, Alex, on uh, social media when uh, Ye was was posting about his meeting uh, with Donald Trump at Mar-a-Lago this week. He was spotted at an airport, walking through an airport with Nick Fuentes, who, as you noted, is a Holocaust denier. Um, he has been condemned by, you know, the, the Anti-Defamation League for anti-Semitic comments. You know, he's also been condemned by the Anti-Defamation League. Andy Worski has been condemned by the Anti-Defamation League white nationalist rhetoric um but but kanye basically put up a video uh saying that the three of them had had dinner along with others at mar-a-lago um and he claimed that uh that trump had been impressed uh with fuentes so <clears throat> yeah the timeline of events is milo yiannopoulos has arranged it, it took us off the, the thing we were covering. But Milo Yiannopoulos arranged this dinner at Mar-a-Lago between Kanye West and Trump, and Fuentes came in on it, okay? I don't fucking know what the security is like around an ex-president, but if you don't know who you're sitting down and having dinner with as a fucking ex-president, then I, don't, then I don't know what to say. Then I genuinely don't know what to say. Because even British Prime Ministers have a security detail for life where they're constantly vetting all of the crazy psychos. Like, look at all of those people that harangue Tony Blair when he's eating his dinner in a restaurant. And they go, you did this, Ar Iraq! Ah! You war criminal! So there's a reason why that they have high security around them. And you don't just find yourself randomly dining with Nick Fuentes and Milo Yiannopoulos. We're going to see some copes there where people like PPP and Andy Worski say, oh, Trump's, Trump thought Nick was a loser. He didn't even know who he was. 
There's no way that Trump didn't know who he was eating dinner with. There's just, there's just no way. To say otherwise is a complete cope. The people around Trump knew exactly who were there because they had to, because it's their job as security for an ex-president. Are you hearing me, folks? Let's listen to some more of Maeve's take. Pattern from the former president before when he is associated with controversial... Okay, yeah, so we've actually just gone past... So Trump, <clears throat> Trump, there's been a fucking lot of news headlines around this because obviously Nick Fuentes is Nick Fuentes. It's sort of gone around the world, this one. It's gone around the world. The fact that Trump had dinner with Nick Fuentes. It's gone around the world that Trump had dinner with Nick Fuentes, Kanye West, and Milo Yiannopoulos. And people like the Drudge Report are featuring it as saying, Nick Fuentes, notorious Holocaust denier, had dinner with Donald Trump. It's gone around the fucking world. This is big ass news in the Nick Fuentes story. And Trump has had to put out something on his social media, right? He's had to put out something on his social media not disavowing Fuentes, not apologising for having dinner with Nick Fuentes, not apologising for his association whatsoever. That's the truth. Instead, all Trump says... All Trump says is... Where am I looking? Here. All Trump says is this. And we'll just remove the all around the world touch of class cover that's drowning us. Oh, it's tough. But obviously Trump pots out a thing on his, is it called Truth? His social media platform. It's not Twitter, but it's Truth. And Trump says, Yay, formerly known as Kanye West, was asking me for advice concerning some of his difficulties, in particular, what to do with his business. We also discussed, to a lesser extent, politics, where I told him he should definitely not run for president. Any voters you may have should vote for, for Trump. Any voters that you may have should vote for Trump. Anyway, we got along great. He expressed no anti-Semitism and I appreciated all of the nice things he said about me on Tucker Carlson. Why wouldn't I agree to meet? Also, I didn't know Nick Fuentes. Okay? Okay? That is not Donald Trump saying, I apologise for having a dinner with Nick Fuentes. That is not Donald Trump saying, I hate Nick Fuentes. He can be cast out into the wilderness. That is not Trump saying any of those things. That is Trump saying he didn't know who Nick Fuentes was beforehand. But I guarantee you the people around him definitely knew. And I guarantee you that they definitely know each other now. Trump was impressed by Nick Fuentes. Nick Fuentes is going all the way to the fucking top. It's a crazy ass timeline we're in. But that's the reality of events. So any cope that you're seeing, saying that, oh, Trump has disavowed, that's lunacy. That is absolute lunacy. There, there is no disavowal in Trump's statement there at, at, at all. And as you will see, it's not just me that's saying that. It's also Maeve from CNN who's saying that. Platform, and I'll just read you what he said. He said, this past week, Kanye West called me to have dinner at Mar-a-Lago. Shortly thereafter, he unexpectedly showed up with three of his friends, whom I knew nothing about. We had dinner on Tuesday evening with many members present on the back patio. The dinner was quick and uneventful. They then left for the airport. And Trump, uh, just a short time ago, also uh, posted again on Truth Social, um, saying that essentially that the there were no, there was no anti-Semitism expressed at this dinner, and adding that he didn't know Nick Fuentes. Um, but of course, we have seen this uh, pattern from the former president before, when he is associated with controversial figures, he tries to. Obviously, I mean, I, I don't know why I'm explaining this, but I suppose I have to state the obvious sometimes. 
Um, CNN are obviously incredibly anti-Trump, so they will always look for a way to crucify him. So obviously they're using the Nick Fuentes angle as a way to say that Donald Trump is a Holocaust denier and then uh, for any... Therefore, anyone who votes for Trump is also a Holocaust and I, Nazi, etc. That's the angle they're running with. But even they're not saying that Trump has disavowed Fuentes. This, it, it might not necessarily be the best victory for Donald Trump, because it's bad PR. It's got all around the world, la 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 la. But it's great PR for, for Nick Fuentes. It's fucking amazing PR for Nick Fuentes. And it's straight out of the Milo playbook, as we'll get into himself uh, from them. And of course, uh, at the bottom of all of this, uh, you know, he's hosting a Kanye West at Mar-a-Lago, his private club, um, someone who has recently been engulfed in controversy uh, over his own anti-Semitic remarks. So it's pretty hard to imagine that the former president missed all of that, Alex. All right, Maeve, stay with us. Uh, I want to bring in two others to this discussion, CNN senior media reporter Oliver Darcy and our senior law enforcement analyst Andrew McCabe, the former FBI deputy director. Uh, guys, uh, thank you both for joining us. Um, Oliver, uh, I'll, let's put aside for a second the fact that apparently people can just show up to dinner with a former president and, and he didn't know about it. But this So, yeah... <clears throat> That's a pertinent point. There's, there's no way you can just show up for dinner with a, with a former president and, and just, just not be frog marched out. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it is possible. Maybe, maybe all of us are going to be having dinner with Donald Trump just randomly because he doesn't know who we are. Maybe, maybe that's what we're supposed to believe, right? Maybe we can just walk into Mar-a-Lago and have dinner with Trump. Maybe it's possible for, for, any, for any common man. But, but I don't believe it, folks. I think that Trump and his people definitely wanted Fuentes and Kanye there. And they wanted to give a signal out to the online right because we're gearing up for a new presidential election and Trump wants to capitalise on what the momentum that boosted him forward in 2016. That momentum was also intrinsic to Milo's success. Now, <clears throat> I did want to show you some of the video uh, before we go into copes and seeds, folks. And that's not the video we want, because that's coming later. We've got a sort of dual show today, but it all links together. It's great writing from Godwinson here. And I feel it apt to just show you this one and then this one. So this is Kanye West and and Nick Fuentes walking through the airport this is great publicity this is great PR Milo knew exactly what he was doing because whilst he didn't have Fuentes ranting and raving in a speech next to Kanye whilst he didn't have any of the the things that you'd expect, right? Milo understands that less is more. Less is more. And let's not forget the interaction he had with Sargon in that hotel room on that gym stream that time. Milo definitely realises that less is more, okay? And that's experience gained from a drunken fumble with Carl Benjamin back during Game of Game. But less is more. And he realises that just having a few frames of Nick Fuentes stood beside Kanye walking through the airport, that's going to paint a picture that tells a thousand words. That's going to say, first of all, why is Kanye with, my, um, with Nick Fuentes? Second question you're going to ask is, where are they going? Third question you're going to ask is, where is it going? What is happening? Why is Nick with, um, with Kanye? Because Milo has set him up. Milo has put these two together. Where are they going? Mar-a-Lago to a dinner with Donald Trump, the ex-president, and potentially the next president. And where is it all going? Where is it all going? Well, it's all going towards Nick Fuentes becoming a future president. I fucking believe in the bumblebees. I watch the skies and I trust no one. And that black oil virus is real. And the timeline that we're in now, whilst it might seem incredibly absurd, it's real. It's true. It's happening. 
we're having a resurgence of the meme magic and brought to you by one of the meme magic masters known as Milo. Hey. Oh, wait, that's funny. Yo, you're really funny. Yo, That is great publicity. So whilst people are asking those questions and going, what the fuck was that? What the fuck's going on? You then, after all of the, after the dinner and after things have happened, you then explain, you then explain what happened, but you do so with an economy. Just as in the Milo playbook, you, you do so with an economy. And this is, I mean, you have to admire Milo's ability to run a campaign and run noise and run interference and, I don't know, be a meme. Be a meme and, and propel people into that meme magic. And this is obviously a, uh, a, a Milo original. <laughs> Yeezy HQ, Los Angeles, California. mar lago debrief. Trump was most perturbed about me. I we'll play this in full speed, then we'll slow it down because every frame of this is wild. That Trump was most perturbed about me asking him to be my vice president. I think that was like lower on the list of things that caught him off guard. It was the fact that I walked in with intelligence. So Trump is really impressed with Nick Fuentes. And Nick Fuentes, unlike so many of the lawyers and so many people that he was left with on his 2020 campaign, he's actually a loyalist. When he didn't know what the lawyers is, you'll still have your lawyer list. Okay. Okay, now we're going to slow that down. We're going to unpack everything that was in that 31 seconds, because that's, it's over at a blink of an eye, but there's so much in there that no one has fucking covered. And you'd think the top A-logs of Nick Fuentes in the sector would have done the show last night unpacking this for six hours, interspersed with super chats, retarded clapping. Alas, alas. Someone has to do their job for them. But better, of course, because nobody does it better. So let's play this so incredibly slowly that we're able to unpack every single frame. Are you with me? Okay. All aboard! Let's go. Let's go. Let's fucking go. So do you see how these are being typed? Like it's an episode of the X-Files. This is almost in the exact same format as they do the locations for episodes of the X-Files. You're supposed to be thinking, this can't be real. You're supposed to be thinking, do 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 My Milo's a master at making you doubt reality. But then... When crazy things happen within his construct of reality, then you just go with it and you believe in the meme magic. So do you see how this starts at the ceiling and we go down? Because we've gone from stargazing and wondering what the plan is to trust. We've gone from watching the skies and now we're having it all revealed to us. This pan reveals it to us. And what's being revealed to us is Kanye West on his phone, right? Probably being filmed somewhat surreptitiously. And Milo Yiannopoulos. Milo Yiannopoulos on camera attempting to brief Kanye West who's on his phone. Milo Yiannopoulos now looks like he's merged with Richard Spencer. In fact, it looks like Richard Spencer and Cat Moy Cammy have fucked and produced Milo Yiannopoulos. Uh, me asking him to be my wife. This is... The whole video is there as an attempt to paint Kanye as very, very close to Donald Trump. They have a connection. Kanye West, because of that connection, is an authority on Trump and Trump's mind. Are you with me? Yet again, another picture. This is at Trump Tower this time. Um, a different context. But again, you can see how close they are. So therefore, Kanye West must be 
some sort of insight into the mind of Donald Trump, ex and probably next president. Milo Yiannopoulos. He's, he's reinvented his look. And God knows why he thought that this was an appropriate attire to go in. But he, he's trusting the plan. Perhaps the plan involves him doing a fusion dance with Catboy Cammy and Richard Spencer. A three-way. But that's Milo Yiannopoulos. Milo Yiannopoulos, the only reason he's actually in this video. And all he's doing is sort of giggling and holding a clipboard and waving his hands while... Kanye West is on his phone, but the reason why he's looking official in doing this is purely so he can say that he is running the campaign, Kanye West for president. Milo is a master at knowing how to place himself to generate memes. He doesn't have to speak, he doesn't have to talk, he just has to be there, be present, looking like a fed, holding the paperwork, and... and Bizarrely looking like looking like this. For many people, Milo has looked like... Well, he's, he's looked very strange. He's been like Roger the Alien. But this is definitely his most outrageous of disguises. Now, obviously, Kanye West doesn't look Milo in the eyes. I don't even think that Kanye West is aware he's being filmed. But you've got Milo indulging him, laughing, literally being a fawning sycophant in order to get Kanye West to say these things. You understand where we're going? So again, we're showing the clip of Fuentes, Kanye West together. So the connections are being made. Milo, Kanye. Kanye, Trump. Trump Fuentes. Trump is really impressed with Nick Fuentes. Trump is really impressed with Nick Fuentes. Now, do you see the, how it's edited here? This is Milo's editing, and it's... I have to give credit where it's due. It's masterful. When Kanye says Trump is really impressed with Nick Fuentes, that could be a statement that applies to anything. Maybe he liked, you know, Fuentes' polite manners at the dinner table. Instead, to drive the point home without saying it, Milo has edited... This image of Nick Fuentes with a megaphone and a rally to highlight, to, to infer, to heavily imply that Trump was impressed with what Fuentes was saying. And that's the mastery of Milo's edit here. It's to paint that Trump was impressed with Nick Fuentes' viewpoints and what he was saying. Nick Fuentes is a loyalist. A loyalist. Okay? So that's where we are currently. Now, if you, if you hate Nick Fuentes in America first, and you've been trying to spin copes out of what's been going on, I think it's incredibly difficult to deny the reality of things. Because even if you hate Fuentes and say that Trump didn't know who the fuck he was and all of this stuff, you can't deny that he's literally being endorsed by Kanye West. Kanye West, who literally has an ability to dine privately with Donald Trump and discuss matters, not just relating to politics, but his own life. You can't deny that Nick Fuentes is, by, at this point, two steps away from Donald Trump. 
That's the truth. That's 100% the facts. But if you've been A-logging him and saying that he'll never be anything, he'll ever amount to nothing, he's just sniffing cum from bedsheets. He's a loser. He's a homosexual. He eats a french fry gay. He's a scrawny dweeb. If that's the angle you've been taking, and you've not really, truly, properly been aware of where Francis has been going over the past year, and you've just been attacking his superficiality, right? Then this, the Kanye West Trump revelations, blow all of that apart. They blow it all to smithereens. And there's a reason why you didn't get a Kino Casino last night, folks. Because they were crying into their pillows. They were f f f f I'm having a panic at that. Francis is supposed to be completely irrelevant. He's supposed to be a child in a basement. With zero political power or influence. It's what you're supposed to think. But because they haven't A-logged him and attacked him on the political points that he's been saying forever because they wanted to keep it fucking dumb and retarded as fuck so Worski could clap along and read Super Chats. When a moment of superficial victory as the one we've seen just occurs, then they have no methods of defense. There's no holding the line. There's not even a battle, right? I want to show you some, uh, some copes, some absolute copes that we saw from the people that were, you know, the, the Meto sisters, the casino hoes. You know, so, so w w this was a cope that was given. Oh, look, he's, he's bombing Nick Fuentes. Okay. But again, it's, it's superficial. It's, it's not necessarily like, Yeah, it, for instance, is with Ye, but he just met Trump. But did you know that Nick Fuentes is a Mexican cat boy, Jew lover, Christ cup, tranny porn, might be gay? Did you know, folks? Did you know? Sometimes you have to literally just take the hat off and tip it across enemy lines. Sometimes you have to recognise when there's a victory, you know. Oh, but Kanye West is a false prophet. Look, look at him here, you know. But Be beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing. Look, look, they've they've circled Masonic symbols and Kanye West is evil and. There's no denying the victory we can see before us. Fuentes and Kanye West are best of friends now. To the point where Fuentes, last night, had to retire. He's basically down tools on his own show because he's destined for greater things. Because he's going to be running the communications... For Kanye West's presidential campaign. Fuentes has decided that there's a greater power for which to serve. And if you're a casino sister and you've been weeping into your, into your super chats there or whatever the fuck they do. If you're really that fucking deluded, then you've been like, oh... I just want to show you this one second. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> the, the announcement from Baked Alaska. Yay, 24. Um, Nick Fuentes is indefinitely suspending his show after six years whilst he moves full-time into political operations for Kanye West and his bid for the presidency. If you've been saying that Nick Fuentes is literally a child in his basement that has zero, zero, hope or chance of being anywhere near the White House or anywhere near serious political influence or power, then that just there blows it all out of the fucking water. Your whole argument, every show that you've strung out for six or seven hours every week is blown out of the fucking water. You are completely fucking decimated by baked Alaska, no less. 
Nick says that the show is not over and not cancelled. You know, he's literally just taking a step back to run this fucking campaign alongside Milo Yiannopoulos. And I genuinely do think that they're going to get Kanye a few hundred thousand votes. I genuinely do think that this is going to be a springboard and great political experience for Nick Fuentes in how to run an IRL political campaign that he will then use to make himself a president of the United States. It's fucking happening. And I don't have any, any doubt in my mind that that's where this timeline is going to end up. I have zero doubt. And this is coming from someone that was A-logging Fuentes first. I was doing it first. I was doing it first. You know, the, the videos where we said Fuentes pooped his pants and we interviewed his mom and we did all of the other... We did the documentaries on Fuentes, laying out what's going on in America first, laying out Milo. We did it first. We did it better. And even I can't deny that this is a flawless victory for Nick Fuentes. Absolutely fucking flawless. But there are those out there who are denying it. There are those out there who are seething, coping, crying themselves into another bucket of KFC and swilling down the gravy in an attempt to stop the tears. Who might we be referring to, ladies and gentlemen? might it be? Who may it be? It's the... <laughs> it's the Coper in chief himself. It's PPP. Remember, AF pack is delayed this year. Also, no refunds, Groypers. Uh, Nick has surrendered his bully pulpit daily AF show in order to go and be a lot of leash for Master Milo. He already seems castrated and lower energy. He, I'll do anything. He'll do anything Milo says in order to rub shoulders with celebs. He'll have no real influence. He's 100% owned. We're gonna enhance that one. We're gonna enhance that one, folks. PPP has surrendered his bully pulpit, Kino Cathedral, in order to go and be on a leash for Master Worski. He already seems castrated and lower energy. He'll do everything Andy says in order to rub shoulders with celebs like Sam Hyde and Keemstar. He will have no real influence. He is 100% owned. It's fucking cold, folks. And it's... I suppose it is what it is, yeah? It's tough, buddy. Your daily reminder that Milo, Nick Fuentes' boss, is an unreconstructed Zionist. How can you fight Zionists when you work for one? Nick giving this low-energy, rambling speech where he quits his show to go work for Milo, who just confirmed on the show he'll be signing Nick's paychecks from now on. Seethe! Seethe and cope and piss and shit. Ladies and gentlemen, that is absolute unconcentrated text to seethe there, folks. Without any self-awareness of his own thing. And in order to try and bolster his scene and gain validation for his scene, he's doing the appeal to Daddy Jim. The desperate appeal to Daddy Jim. Daddy Jim will save me again. Daddy Jim is on point. Uh, I'm not going to read this because it's an exceptionally cold take. It's an exceptionally cold take from Jim. He's decided to pin this tweet. So, to get it straight... The saviour of the white race is now a black rapper whose campaign manager is an open homosexual Milo. Keeps black mail on everyone around him and provides evidence to the... F I don't know why I'm doing a Jim Sterling voice, but let's go with it. Triple A! 
and the comms director is a homosexual latinx. 24 year old. Ah. Ralph weighs in, and Ralph really does fucking whip. Really does. I, there was a point where PPP could stand in a ring with Ralph and, and nine times out of ten win out. There was that point at, at, at some point in time. Um, alas, alas, because uh, on something like this, where are we? So Ralph says, your daily reminder that you weigh 800 pounds and co-host a show with a baby killing coke fiend. Absolutely fucking bodied. Straight up bodied. Laminated. Completely fucked. Um, and also, where's the lie? Where's the lie from Ethan Ruff? Um, <clears throat> seethe incoming, folks. Nice rebuttal, buddy. Keep worshipping your Zionist master Milo. Let's not forget, you're a morbidly obese alcoholic with a coke problem that eats shit on camera. Laugh my ass off. <sighs> Do people want me to enhance this and pick apart the cope and sieve? Okay, okay, uh, I'll, I'll give you what you want. Let me just get the music back and we'll give you exactly what you want, folks. Nice rebuttal, buddy. Keep worshipping your Zionist master, Milo. PPP's Zionist master is Keemstar and Shackles and YouTube. That's who's paying PPP's bills. Let's not forget you're a morbidly obese alcoholic. Uh, uh, uh. Look in the mirror, my friend. With a coke problem. Now, whilst PPP might not have a coke problem, he's also got problems with various other substances that are destroying him. He's got a problem with food. He's got a problem with weed. He's got a problem with gambling. And he's got a problem with just being a pus pussy made, bitch made bitch. That eats shit on camera. Well, I don't know what doing a show with Worski is daily. Or you're literally being humiliated by a stuttering retard. I don't know what that's called, if it's not called eating shit live on air. But there was a point where the real PPP, the PPP that didn't shiver to death and die in that cabin, would have torn Ethan Ralph a new one. Alas, he's whimpering on Twitter like a bitch. Like a bitch. Don't take my word for it. There's a comfy neat here called Tensi who says, that's a whole other le layer of cope. You kept saying every single week that Nick would never have legs in politics and you were wrong. Accept your L and move on. For real. Based Tensi. Based Tensi. PPP. This is shades of Sargon and UKIP, bud. Nick is over his head with the sharks. Now, shades of Sargon and UKIP? Not even slightly. Not even what Sargon's whole point before he started this UKIP arc was that he wanted Donald Trump to tweet out Game Again. All Sargon wanted was Trump's validation. Well, Nick has that. So it's nowhere near the fucking UKIP Sargon arc. Trump in Fuentes aren't little fringe figures. They're all, this news has spread all around the world. La, 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 la. It's been all over the fucking airwaves. It's top featured on like Breitbart, the Drudge Report. It's all over the fucking place. CNN are covering it. MSNBC are covering it. The BBC News are covering it. Every fucking news network in the world is covering this. The only news network that was covering Sargon when he joined what was a dead political party known as UKIP 
way after the referendum had occurred, that their whole raison d'etre was about uh, bringing to, the, to light, the only news coverage that got was me and a few autists in gym was probably the biggest broadcaster that covered that shit. This ain't nowhere near Sargon in the Liberalists, and it's a massive cope to see you try and wheel out past victories to try and present yourself as an authority on this and not accept your L. Because let's not forget that this and all of this shit that he's been doing, all of this, right, it's a whole other layer of cope. You kept saying every single week that Nick would never have legs in politics, and you were wrong. Accept your L and move on. Okay? Accept your L and move on. I think that's the last of the PPPC. That's the last of the PPPC. So, I feel it apt now to line up the next part of this show. Because we've barely even gotten started. The first hour was supposed to be this. The second hour is the reason why Kino Casino didn't stream last night. Covering the biggest happening in Nick content ever. Literally ever. You might be thinking, oh, it's because they were so fucking felted that they couldn't, they absolutely couldn't muster a show together. They couldn't manage to get their act together, stop the tears from flowing and put on a show where they covered this. Because any coverage would just mean that they've completely lost. But there is a reason why they didn't stream last night. Um, it goes deeper. It goes fucking deeper, folks. Need to move this over here. Because at this point, I feel it apt to bring out the best co-host in this sector. The man who really infuses the content with greatness, soul, and a potential that really shouldn't have been smothered into the fucking cradle. That co-host, the greatest of them all, Lil Andy. Lil Andy Jr. Murdered by his own father. Never forget that, folks. Murdered by his own father. Reason. Reason why. Why, why was Lil Andy killed, smothered in the fucking cradle? Why? Walski murdered his own son. And I don't really know where to fucking go with this, apart from just showing you all of it in order, in, 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 how I found it. And you, you're going to understand exactly why Andy Walski murdered his child so he could fuck trannies. Or certainly become very best great friends with trannies and get them to donate to his show. That's the reason why Lil Andy Jr. died. Okay, so... This... It, this is a tranny that Andy Worski follows on Twitter. And not only does he follow it, he's best friends with it, and I am 100% convinced that I have found the identity of Metica Masochist. It's real. There's only one reason why Medica Masochist keeps giving Andy Worski hundreds and hundreds of dollars. It's because it's a mentally ill tranny that has a bizarre association with Andy Worski going back years and years and years and years and years. I'm ready. Let's go. So this, this person here calls itself Rena Jerje and it's Medica Masochist. It's a tranny. It's a tranny. And it's followed Worski for years and years and years. We're getting into more of this. My almonds are activated. My almonds are definitely activated. Um, holy 
<laughs> of this is true. My God. Let's go. Uh, no, we go there. We see that. But we also see the tranny. No. My life history and family photos. Fuck, I was wondering where it's been weird. Oh, no. I'm sorry to hear. I'm more hyped. They've been stealing people's info without consequences. So this isn't just a, a guy he's randomly followed. It's not just a guy that... And we're painting the case here because there's fucking loads of this shit. It's not just a guy that he's followed and not had any contact with. There's yet more, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yeah. That death makes sense, bro. But so does all the platforms, I'm sure. And look, as you can see, there's a great, a, a great discussion they've been having. And this is over years and years and years. Let's read this one from Metacomaticist. Love your stuff, by the way. Oh, thank you. You enjoying the YouTube self-coated stuff? The next step is going to be massive. Nice. Uh, he's been on and off, but that's always good to hear. The rabbit hole we're about to dive into is completely fucked. Okay. The tranny, Andy, Warpath Warski, out here simping. So the tranny's calling it out for simping. Calling him out for simping. And here he is, liking the tranny's tweets. This picture, by the way, I'm going to show you what that picture was. You're going to think, why has Andy Warski liked this? Is he just a complete... It, it, it mask is off. Why is, and what I've done is I've decided to, I've edited Worski's face onto this, purely in the interests of censorship and, and keeping it a family-friendly show, okay? This is what Worski, this is what Worski liked. Now, bear in mind, Worski's face wasn't on these, wasn't on this tweet. Worski's face is a, is a, is a Gobbinson original edit, purely because I, I just thought it was the best way to show you this, because it's so fucked up. But as you can see, the tranny... That's what Worski liked there. That's what Worski liked. Now, obviously, Worski's face is covering up a throbbing, veiny schlong. I have a body and a dress and also a dick, XD. I really hope I'm not catching anyone off guard here. But while you're mesmerised, Andy Worski, uh, let me take advantage of you. Come down in front of me. Medica masochist exposed, ladies and gentlemen. But there is yet more. There is yet a great fucking treasure trove of this shit. Because the tranny had an OnlyFans that Worski was paying towards. I used to run an OnlyFans, but I lost motivation for it. I'm no. This is the reason why Andy Worski died, by the way. The the child. Andy Jr., why well, I had to be smothered into the cradle. I'm no longer poor as I used to be. No longer poor as it used to be. It's got a lot of expendable income now for which to donate to the Kino Casino and pretend to be medical masochist. It's got a hospital job, which it's happy about. Hence why I wanted to suggest temp changes for ske whatever the fuck this is. But it used to have an OnlyFans. It doesn't, it doesn't need an OnlyFans now. This association, we're going through the years here, 20, 20, 2019. Andy, you the hottest scruffy. Love heart. Did you see Andy in the airport videos? Absolute heartthrob. Worski follows this, by the way, and likes it and interacts with all of the tweets, okay? This one, early 2019 now, talking about when he was uh, feuding with Ian Miles Chong, the tranny's like, Metacomasochist says, oh God, Andy, I'm so sorry. You look like you're fighting tears. Stay strong, hope things go all right. We all love you, buddy. We all love you, buddy. By we? Is it the tranny community or something? I mean, it, it, it fucking continues, folks. This is a, a wild ride. 
We're not going to eat into the videos just yet. Andy Worski, unblock moderator Marcy. I don't interact too much in this circle anymore since like 2012. Oh, aside, when he had Qbot block a bunch of people by accident and unblocked me after a bit. I really haven't been in this whole circle for years since the Tonka fight. I find it super painful. Implosion of Ralph, super depressing. But the narrative that, that we can see there is that Andy unblocked it and then refollowed it. And then carried on this, this friendship where it was like absolutely hand in hand associating with. So Worski follows this tranny right now. And here's the, here's the tranny crying about when it was unfollowed by Andy. Instead, Worski followed it back. Got it to call itself Medical Masochist and donate to the Kino Casino. It's over, Casino Sisters, is it not? Now, you might say, oh, Worski's retarded. He didn't know it was trans. He didn't know it was a tranny. We've got a lot of stuff on this tranny, by the way. Um, I'm trans. This is. I'm trans, but don't get this joke. So, this is as of 2020. Worski goes, it's a women stay in the kitchen joke. Wait a minute. Hey, Andy. Haven't been in that corner of the internet for a while, lol. How have you been? Amazing. My new show is killing it with over 1,000 watching nightly. Everything going well? How about you? Um, take note of the timestamp here. My new show is killing it with over 1K watching. It's the cycle of Worski. I mean, he's not talking about the Kino Casino here, by the way. He's literally talking about, like, I don't know, was this subcultured or some shit? Um, he continues, this, this tweet's unavailable, but he continues, oh, it was subcultured. It's a dope comedy show every night. I've been really good. I'm on Ohio now, though, so that's different. But I work at a hospital preventing COVID, so that's cool as hell. You know? There clearly have been in contact, privately as well, where they seem to be updating each other on their personal lives. Worski says, I do not and never took medication. This is a man who gives zero shits. This is 2018, by the way. This goes back, Metica Masochist, this tranny and Worski, their association goes back years and fucking years. Andy, your actual... Trans fans who pay attention, understand. You're not giving any fucks, especially now. These people have defined you with paedophilia. Attempted to steal revenue by ruining your show. Ruining the contract. Ruining your relationship. It's okay, Andy. You're going through really hard times right now. And I'm amazed you are still going. And keeping things somewhat as positive as you can. But like not taking shit from anyone anymore. Love heart. We know you got this, man. I'm going to show you who this tranny is, okay? Um, okay, I'm just lighting up some music because the image I'm seeing here is something that I know Andy Worski has whacked off to. Something that I know Worski aborted his own son to whack off to. So, we are going to line up some... <sighs> Once this advert finishes, and then we'll just sync you with the, the full reveal of Metica Masochist, the tranny that's been giving the Kino Casino... 
all of its wages from this hospital job that's been followed by Andy Worski and is still currently followed by Andy Worski. It's been having this friendship with Andy Worski where they swap over details of their personal life and Worski likes its degenerate posts and wax off to images like this. Metaca masochist. Do you want to see it wearing a Star Trek outfit, folks? Do you want to see it wearing a Star Trek uniform? Now, we've had to uh, put Worski's face here because obviously it was a dangling cock and balls. Worski, the only reason I was able to find all of this shit, by the way, was that Worski was liking these tweets. And I was like, what the fuck's going on? They've not done a show tonight, and instead Worski's liking this shit. Give your head a fucking shake there, buddy. Give your head a fucking shake. Um, but that's the identity of Metica Masochist, okay? Um, and if you doubt that Worski's all about the fucking Trapno state, well, I've got a leak from way back when, when all of this was being paraded in front of us. It was hidden in plain sight. In fact, it was barely even hidden. Because you remember this one? To the people who think Sargon can sue because I applied for the trademark liberalist. You do know the term has been used since the 1800s. I'm just the first to apply for the trademark. The principles will all be applied to make the best trap no state. You're welcome all. That's the great evil of Andy fucking Worski, isn't it? Murdered his own son so he could whack off to trannies. But don't just take my word for it, right? Don't just take my word for it, because we're going to look now at Andy in his own words. Andy Worski, this is your life. This is Andy Worski in his own fucking words. And this is content that comes from the own, my own personal archive. This is content that comes right from the Godwinson vault of all of the stuff that got deleted, right? But we were saving it for a rainy day, Andy. We were saving it for a rainy, rainy, rainy day. And winter has come, my friend. It's Andy Worski. Let's, let's hear his words, shall we? You know what? I know a girl who's had seven abortions. Seven abortions. You would think at like five, you'd be like, hey honey, you wanna, I don't know. <laughs> Stop fucking having abortions. Maybe uh, maybe we do that. Who knows? That's a bit rich. Coming from Mr. Andy Worski. A man who forced his pregnant girlfriend with a shotgun to her temple. A bag over her head. He drove her to the abortion clinic. He dragged her into the office. He threw money at the doctor to perform the abortion. And on the way out, he kicked her down the stairs to ensure that the job had been finally finished. And instead of giving her a lift back, he just left her in the street to cry. That's the story of how Andy Worski murdered his own fucking son. Try that? I bet the semen in his balls is like, rock, paper, Oh, rock. Who picks rock? All right, guys, well, uh, hopefully she keeps me. I wonder if she goes to the same place to have her abortions. Or does she shop around for prices? Holiday special on abortions. Save 50% on any abortion that you want. And any method of choice. 
I wonder if she does head to the same place, because if she does, it's not like really like an abortion clinic anymore, you know? It's more like a Waffle House. Like, hey honey, how you doing? You want the usual? Scrambled fetus and OJ? Scrambled fetus. This, by the way, folks, is scorched earth on this piece of shit. There's gonna be no half measures tonight. Cause we've held back a lot of this shit. But tonight, I, I really am gonna fucking burn it down. Fuck them all. That was disgusting, I apologize. And if she does go to the same place, I really hope they have one of those like stamp cards. You know, those stamp cards, it's like, the tenth abortion is free. Like, come on, honey, we need two more abortions. Oh, we get the tenth one for free. Let's do it. We're inside his mind here. You see, you see, we're inside the mind of Andy Worski, the uh, the twisted mind, you might say, of Andy Worski. Look at him. Look at him there. It was all here for us, laid out, hiding in plain sight. The trannies, the abortions. It was all waiting That's for us to unpack. We need the 10th stamp card. I wonder how the stamp card would look. It'd be like, every like stamp is like, you know, a fetus and then they have to punch a hole in it. It's like aborting a stamp card. I wonder how the inside of her uterus looks like, you know? I bet you there's like carvings on the wall, like watch out for the man in the white coat and like blueprints and escape plans and like ticks on how many days they've been in there. That must be a pretty creepy f uterus. How did I fail? How did I fail? It's like a horror movie, the uterus where fetuses come to die. I hope in the future, like, a fetus ends up escaping before she has the abortion, right? And she's like, she's still with the umbilical cord, and she's like, Stop having abortions! Keep me! Okay? I'm gonna be a fucking lawyer or a doctor. I promise you that, but just keep me. Stop abortioning. Stop abortioning. Is abortioning even a verb? If not, I now call copyright on the word abortioning. Um, yo, we're gonna have a fun-filled weekend, man. We're gonna be drinking beers, abortioning, and longboarding, and we're gonna like skydive. Whoa, what was the second one? Abortioning. All the cool kids are doing it. And I would like to apologize for not posting a video. I'm sorry for, you know, I got like, three hate emails like you you are now arrogant you are officially arrogant in my books events that have happened are happening now ladies and gentlemen um so that you've just heard his thoughts there on abortions right and a lot of that was sort of him imagining what it would be like to abort a child. But now he's got true experience of all of those things that he hypothesized in that video. He's got true first-hand experience of all of that because he murdered his own son. Um, he needs, uh, he literally, like. We fast forward, by the way, funny. to the current year. Where he's aged like milk because of all of the coke and trannies and whacking off to anything. And we see the current incarnation of the eldritch entity known as Anal Vape. It passed through vessels known as Geek Thulu and Kyla and even JF. And now it passes through a vessel known as PPP. Watching him cry constantly and go, Abarski and Aston. His nickname for you is Aston. 
okay, great it's green very, fucking disc. It's very creative. Very it's creative. Very fucking... it, Warsky, uh, okay, so the insult is ass ton. As in, ass weighs a ton. I, I, that is quite creative, I can't lie. I can talk about, like, a, oh, about, about a fucking abortion or whatever. At least I had the decency as a fucking drug addict with my girl. As a drug addict. Friend, for me and her to agree and go, we would be horrible parents. Let's end this fucking baby's life. Fuck it. Is that really how you make a decision to murder another person, especially an unborn baby? Let's play that again. Let's. This is how they came to Check that fucking out. conclusion. We and go. We would be horrible parents. Let's end this fucking baby's life. Fuck it. Let's end this fucking baby's life. Fuck it. That's fucked. That's fucked, bro. And you know what's also fucked? My good friend, PPP, with a big smile on his face as he hears that. Big, big beaming grin on his face, like the caterpillar from Bug's Life. Take it out. I'm not even, I don't even care about abortion. Take it out. Take out my abortion? own son. I think that the people who abort babies are probably the people that you want to abort babies. Because it's less people at, at, who, who don't go at a, on, on a green light. It's the people at the bank who, when the person's like, yeah, next, please, they're on their phone and they're not moving, and it creates longer lines. It's the people who hold you up at the ATM. It's the people who sell crack to your child are the people who are being aborted. You should be... Look, look at this. The face of a fucking murderer, ladies and gentlemen. This literal rage here as he reenacts the kill. It is evil. Pure evil. But you know who's, uh, who's having a real good time? They're having a real good time. The caterpillar from Bug's Life. That's fucked. That's super fucked. Now, obviously, Worski Jr. wasn't consigned to a life of selling meth. That child had a lot of potential. And had the child have been born, and they genuinely did think that they were going to be terrible parents, then, I don't know, offer it for adoption to a loving family. There are plenty of people out there who can't have children that I'm sure would have raised little Andy Jr. right. Be happy that people are being aborted. What, what, what you think it's like a, 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 an amazing... Did you hear that? What, you think it's like a, 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 an Did you hear what he just said? Parental unit who's like, what With... Aborted? You should be happy that people are being aborted. What, what, what you, think you should be happy that people are being aborted. It's like a, a, an amazing family parental unit who's like, let's abort our baby. No, they want to have the baby. The people who have, who have abortions are the people who are like, like, oh, fuck this baby, just smoking crack. I wasn't ready. It was both of our decisions. But at least we had the decency, unlike Ralph, who brought a baby into the world. Unlike, so, do you see how they justify their own life choices? They justify their own life choices in measurement to Ethan Ralph. That's kind of fucked, is it not? I don't wake up in the morning, abort a child, and go, well, I, you know, I did this because Ralph had a kid. That's a deranged way of thinking. And I'm not, like, the greatest expert on Ralph these days. But from what I can see, he's just taken his family to a Havana penthouse and they've had a really good holiday. I don't think Ralph's been a real terrible dad. In fact, I think that bitch who's got his child in California, she's an awful mum. And 
Bizarrely, that child would be better off with Ethan Ralph. But there's hope for that child and for both of those children. Do you know why there's hope? And there's a future? Because they weren't murdered in the fucking cradle, Andy Worski. These have a long life to live where they can redeem themselves and they can do great things in their life. They have potential because they were born into this world and weren't murdered by their own father. Ethan Ralph goes, get a grip. And abandon it. And then let, and now it's not taking care of it and is hiding underground in a fucking bomb shelter from a baby, his own baby. Oh, all right. Andy Jr. pros, no! Andy Jr. is at least in fucking heaven, fucking, fucking rolling around in clouds and shit. Andy Jr. is at least in fucking heaven, fucking rolling around in clouds or some shit. That's the justification for why Worski murdered the son, so he could whack off to traps. But it's okay, because Andy Jr. is in heaven and rolling around in clouds or some shit. Worski's just said there, it's better for the baby to be dead and roll around in clouds than it is to have a life where it can change its mind, where it can see more of the world and live a lifestyle that's more appropriate than selling meth. I mean, that's how Andy Worski genuinely was thinking when he murdered his own son. That he would constantly be this drug-addled moron and wouldn't step up when the child was born or wouldn't have the decency to hand it over to some people for adoption who could raise the child with the correct parenting that it deserved. He just thought he was going to be Andy Worski forever. And, you know, he hasn't changed, has he? He still is the Andy Worski that murdered his, uh, murdered his son. There's no repentance or contrition here. But your fucking baby's abandoned, and now your other baby's abandoned. I mean, it's so rich that he talks about children being abandoned when this man literally murdered a fucking child. Do you think I care about fucking... Oh, oh, oh no! I will say this. Going through I, will, I will say this. He says fighting back the glee and the joy and the laughter. I will say this. After Worski is gone, just completely unhinged. He's red in the face. He's been screaming. Fucking end the child's life. But I will just say this. What, should we hear what it, I, I will just say? It's IP2 clips. Even though I'm against abortion, is probably the ultimate argument for abortion. <laughs> you know? I, I, I hate think, to say it. I, I hate to say you it. You should have abortions. As a, I disavow some of what Andy is saying, you know, but it's pretty fucking joke. This is like Andy's on on him. I I disavow some of what Andy's saying, but the murder of his own son is pretty fucking jokes. That's fucked. That's fucked. That's truly fucked. I, look, I don't think you should have abortions as a mean means of uh, contraception. You know, all that bullshit. And I also... I, I don't think you should have abortions as a means of contraception. <laughs> For people who doubt how much of a retard Andy Worski is, just let that one sink in, ladies and gentlemen. It is killing a baby. I'm not going, well, it's just a bundle. I know what it is. I know, I understand what it is. He knows what he's done. But he knows it's killing a baby. It's not just pixels on a screen. He knows, he knows the, the, the uh, magnitude of his actions, but he's unapologetic. I, here's my opinion. I don't give a fuck. With the whole Roe versus Wade thing, I'm like, everyone's like, what is your opinion? I don't care. I don't care about other people's babies. I don't... Do, you know, do you know why Worski don't give a fuck about the murder of his own son? Because he's got his bread and circuses. Because he's got his medica masochist um, facilitating him. Making him uh, feel pleasure and joy. He's got this to whack off to every time it tweets. He's got, uh, he's got 
this. That's why he's murdered his own fucking son. He's also got... <laughs> In fact, we'll play this, shall we? We'll just play the rest of it, and then we'll go... I don't care who go. dies. I don't care who lives. I care about doing the show with Ashton, boxing, playing video games, watching movies, that's why Andy, that's why little Andy had to die. That's why little Andy had to die. Oh, hanging out with the boys and having some beers. Oh, some, some black, well, for the women in Chicago had an abortion. I'm like, I hope they have a party for it. I don't care. This is Kino. This is some Kino shit. I wonder. This is Kino. This is some Kino shit, the murder of a child. For what Andy Jr. would think of this unhinged rant. Andy and this... Jr. And they're like, Andy oh, oh you like, killed I your son. Dad. Maybe it was a fucking, maybe it would have ended up being a retarded baby. You don't know that. If I, right. when I was at my cokehead phase, with my ex, had a fucking, look, it, it was revealed by Geek Thulu, that fucking piece of shit. You revealed this. Now everyone thinks I care about this thing. I you know what, Andy Jr. Give a and then we like, care. And then Andy forced her to have it. We and care. Then she played Mario where she saw little buddy. Oh, but she saw. You want to know the, uh, We're here like, for you. In your spirit. And I went, what are you, We're praying for you. Like, abortion, and I went. Cool. Because we know you ain't rolling round that was the, that was on little clouds there. It was sad. We know because you were murdered by your own course, father. You're burning in the fires of hell. Happen. I don't think you should have an abortion. And it's awful because you shouldn't be we there. Fucking out of our the only minds. person that should be burning in the we fires of hell I can't even believe there are motherfuckers is out this there man. that said fire Worski. Like, this is the Worski that we need. No, you know what? We I'll get a fuck. Anti back. You like, know what? This is okay, you the know fucking, what? Like, the cope. The cope. If y'all want it back, like, I was trying to be. On Tarski King mode. Like, I was trying to be the nice laughing fucking F slur. You know what? If you guys want now, because everyone's gonna throw tomatoes anyway, I'll just say whatever I fucking think. And my thing is. King! Yeah, tell us, tell us what you really think, Andy. Tell us what's really on your mind, Andy. Tell us about the cocaine. Tell us about the murdered son. Tell us about the traps. Tell us about the tranny, known as Metica Masochist, who's been giving you hundreds of dollars on live stream every time you go live with the Kino Casino, that you've maintained an intimate friendship with since, at the very least, 2018. Yeah, tell us all about it. This is based! What a cope. If you cry about some people's abortions, that's a waste of your fucking time. You know what? How about this? People who cry about abortions, have a kid! It's a waste of oh, your time you to keep the memory the of Lil Andy alive. It's a waste of our time, apparently, to mourn the death of this fallen king. I don't care. We care. I literally don't care. I have always... I'm not even pro-choice. I'm pro... I couldn't give a fuck. Worski's pro decadence. That's what Worski's pro of, you know? Worski's just decadence personified. And he will murder not just his. It, it, it will say something if a man will murder his own son if it got in the way of his pursuits. That says something about a man, does it not? That says something real fucked about another man. Very few people would murder another, let alone their own son so that they could wank off to traps. Andy Worski, a man who don't give a fork about what goes on. That's kind of... But we've got more... Hey, what's up, everyone? We've got more from Goblinson's Worski archive. Are we ready for this one? Are we ready? I'm ready. Let's fucking go. Andy Worski here. How you all doing? Hope you all doing fantastic. I'm here with... Chris Worski. Chris Worski's back there. And I had the idea, I'll turn up the fan. I had the idea to do the gay porn challenge. Well, Chris wants to That's, do a challenge. Remember, like, this is the reason why. This is the reason why Lil Andy Jr. was snuffed out. It's the reason why, folks. 
so we could do the gay porn challenge. Do it like, a, like, you know, we'll do an arm wrestle or like a disgusting thing. Or, and then, or I'm, I'm like, or what if we watch gay porn and the first person to look away gets punched? <laughs> this is insane, that's good. They want to be part of it. I don't want so at this point in the timeline, the eldritch entity known as Anal Vape was inhabiting the Chris Worski host body. It would then go on to inhabit the JF host body. Then the failure ghost body, host body. Then Geek Fulu was the host body. Then Kyla was the host body. And now the host body is PPP. I don't want to watch gay, I don't have anything against gay people or anything. I know you don't have anything against gay people. He's afraid that if we post this, we're going to look homophobic because we didn't look want to watch fucking gay porn it's not homophobic if you don't want to watch fucking gay porn but it's a challenge gay porn it's like the doctor who theme too does not it how long you can look at the porn Without looking away, that's all it is. It's not homophobic. This guy been desensitized to a lot. Have you been desensitized to homosexual porn? No. Then that's what makes this challenge entertaining. Oh my God, you're like, well, watch. Honestly, it's just whoever looks away gets punched. Okay. Oh <laughs> my God. Okay, and let, okay, let's just do. Leland had to die oh. for this. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, disclaimer here. And uh, no! Uh, we are not homophobic. Um, we are in support of gay people, gay marriage, trannies, all that shit. You know, fuck that. Um, however, as a straight male, we are we are straight men. We do have... I'm going to put incognito window here. I don't want no one heading through my history. Who's like, going to go on your history? I, I, well, I don't know, maybe if I have a chick over and she's looking through my shit, she goes, what the fuck is this? Man on man? Well, first of all, I've never searched gay porn before. So you're uh, X to doubt. X to fucking doubt that one. That's a hard X there. I have no doubt in my mind that Worski has observed, participated in the masturbation of lots and lots of fag porn. Whether that man's wearing a dress or not, it's still gay to me, bro. You're gonna help me, okay? You're gonna help me. Okay, sure. All right, all right. <laughs> shut up, shut buddy. Up, buddy. Shut up, you. I've never watched gay porn. Here we go. All right, so we're on a page where we're not gonna even show you guys. Um, it's just X videos. All right, so do you just type in gay here? Or you can click on the other Oh, I can't yeah. even just a thumbnail. Oh, this is just disaster. Lil Andy died for this. Okay. So in support of gay rights and everything. Lil, Lil Andy had to be smothered in the cradle so his dad could do this. In support of gay rights. I guess we're just going to promote uh. this and... Uh, okay, which one do we do? I do want to do the challenge. I don't want to. We need to, Chris. <laughs> this is for gay rights, gay support. We're doing this for gay people everywhere. Alright. Uh, okay. I'm now, you've got a man's face here, right, who's feigning disgust, feigning the fact that he's already searched this many times before that's why he's gone on to incognito mode so his host can't see the history um and the the previously watched content that he's been partaking in with the pleasure of madame madame palm and her four fingers there but this is supposed to be the face of disgust you want to see the real face of disgust the co-host look that's a man who's genuinely disgusted by what he's seeing this is a man who murdered his own son so he could whack off to the content that he's seeing Just a click. Oh, there's just. All right, I'm clicking this. Okay, right, wait, hang on, hang on. Okay, before so, we start, wait. Before we start, just this paused video is not making my day. Uh, hopefully, when we click, okay. So, when I, go, I I say three, two. Anticipation, excitement, bro. You murdered your own child for this. 
get some perspective. As you can see there, he's doing the Andy Worski as four things. And Andy Worski is one thing. Andy Worski is one thing and one thing only. Do you want to know what Andy Worski is? Andy Worski is a child killing decadent. Andy, no! No, Andy, no! On one, we both look, I hit play. The moment any of us look away and not look directly at this gayness, at these men blowing each other, the moment we look away, you lose, and then we have to punch each other, and that's the end of the video. We're not pulling no, no laughing challenge where we keep trying to power through the video. Okay. You can look at the, that anime. Fucking. That oh, that's a little better. Yeah, the, that one's better. You can look at that before we start, okay? Hmm. It's a chick being fucked in the ass and in her pussy while giving a hand job. It's a, it's a three character. That's, what, that's what's happening there. All right. Wow. No, we don't need to full screen it. Okay, ready? Okay, ready? No. Okay, I know you're not, but are you ready? No. We're, we're child. I'm never challenge. gonna be ready. We're child. I'm never challenge. gonna be ready. I lost I'm gonna, the. I lost the last challenge. I need to win. That's probably gonna lose then. <laughs> okay, you ready? And on one. Okay, ready? Three. Hey, little Andy. Little Andy Junior. I see you're up there rolling in them clouds. Do you ever wonder what your dad's doing? You know, the dad that murdered you, little Andy? You ever wonder what he's doing when you're rolling round in them clouds there? Well, I'm about to fucking show you. Three, two, one. Oh, and... Oh, okay, okay, and start. So there are two men stuck. Little Andy! Don't look, little Andy! Yeah, that doesn't bother me at all. That doesn't bother me. It's it's just 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 don't amazing. gaze yeah, down that's, onto that's, this that's corporeal that's realm, little Andy. I'm just making a squinty face. You I'm won't like eating? what you see. This is the reason why anything. you were murdered. You like fast forward this then, just get to the meat. Oh. <laughs> Pardon the pun. Oh. Oh. A third man has joined and they're all making out now. Good for them. They're doing a triangle of making out. Enjoy cock. <laughs> Is that a Coca-Cola t-shirt which says enjoy cock? Oh no! Little Andy as he's walking on those clouds there and he's just peering over the edge and he's looking down at what his dad's doing. Little Andy Jr. is, is trying to relive the abortion. He don't even want to be in heaven at this point. He don't want to look down and gaze upon this shit. Little Andy's trying to end it all once again. And there it is! Oh, this is this out now! Oh, I can't, I can't do this! Hide his eyes, St. Peter. <laughs> no, we... Cover Andy Jr.'s eyes, St. Peter, please God. Knowing this, Chris, you want I to... regret every second of this. Good for that. I regret every second of this, he says with a beaming smile on his face. And his co-host is actually showing the level of disgust that is appropriate for what's going on here. The co-host knows that Worski murdered his own son for this. That's fucking tough. But, uh, uh, I'm not homophobic, they, I swear to the God. Board. I, I'm, I'm having a support. This is support. We're supporting support. gay dudes. This is in support. There are guys. two men sucking this guy's cock right now my, my my brain's telling me to not be part of this oh my god i've never been on this website with a soft dick before oh god he's never been on that gay porn website with a soft dick before his words his words cover his eyes and his ears saint peter that's fucked that's truly fucked. Never forget what that man did. Little Andy Jr. had to die? 
So Medica Masochist could live. Let that one sink in. Andy Jr. had to die. So Medica Masochist might live. And live its best life. Live this life. Mr. Worski liked your tweet. I photoshopped Andy's head over the cock and balls for the sake of family friendly entertainment. the high ground, Anakin. It's another one from my archive. Tonight we're bringing down the dark side of the force. We're doing what our apprentice simply had no ability to do. Our apprentice was turned to the fucking dark side and became the fucking vessel for anal vape, the eldritch entity. And I've had to come back from my retirement on Tatooine to finish the fucking job. I'm ready. Let's fucking go. Let's go, champ. Let's go, champ. Let's fucking go, chap. I know what you're gonna say. I know what you're gonna say. Where the fuck have you been? I know I've been missing for a while, and I have the story to explain. I've been missing for a while. I've got a story to explain to you. I've been out aborting my own son. In why? So sit back, relax, and prepare for the most ultimate why I was missing story. And it all starts with one sentence. I, I killed my kid. It all starts with one sentence. I got addicted to masturbating. You can't control it, but it now, little Andy Jr., if you're just gazing down and wondering what Dad's up to, this one's going to answer all your fucking questions and make you never want to look down again. Better that way. Cause he will say what he wants to say. One blink of the eye and what do you know? You're at the worst so I woke up one morning, like everyone does, if they're not dead. I went to my computer to look at some porno. So I sat down and I prepared myself to watch some porno. Yeah, I watch porn with my hat and my aviators. So what? So what? Fuck you. I can do what I want, okay? I'm Andy Worski. Anyway, Fuck you, fuck you, I do what I want in my dad's office that I've not moved out of after all these fucking years. His dad's office, his poor dad, he walks into his office in order to do some work, but he can't 
because it just stinks of cum and aborted children. Started to watch some porn and something terrible happened. What the? My erection was missing. His erection was missing. The vanilla porn just ain't doing it for Worski anymore. He needs those sweet, sweet traps to make his little pencil sharp. That's fucked. That's fucked, buddy. When you've literally watched so much porn, you've become so desensitized to it that you're doing this in your dad's office. Hello? Come on. It's naked ladies. I got pretty depressed about it that day. I won't lie. Oh my gosh. These, by the way, are like my version of the Ted Bundy tapes. We're going all in tonight. Making a murderer is what this one is. Notice how there was no tears or crying in the bathtub over little Andy Jr.? No. There was only tears and crying in the bathtub when he couldn't whack off. I tried everything for the next few weeks. Even the Sears catalog failed me. And then suddenly... The doorbell rang. I went to the door and no one was there. But there was an envelope, unaddressed, on the floor. I picked it up and I read it. It had the name of a website. But underneath it said, warning, this website is the hottest website. Use at your own risk. I laughed, and I decided since I was so desperate, I would try it. And holy shit. The amount that I masturbated the next two weeks was outrageous. Almost sad, really. This time lapse that I'm showing you is just from the first day when I found the website. I ran out of film and I couldn't really show you anymore. I can't resist my hands touch. I masturbate way too much. Please tell me what to do. My hand has become something I just want to screw. Poor Andy Jr. My heart goes out to you, little buddy. I hope wherever you are, you're away from this pain. But rest assured, I am back. Andy Worski is back. A lot of videos heading up. I need a time to think about... Now, <clears throat> what era do you think that this is from? It's pretty early Andy, isn't it? We're going to say about 10 years ago? He's certainly less coke bloated, less addled by the drugs. He's less... He's less fucked as he is now, quite frankly. Um, but as you can see, the eternal cope never, never ceases to be a refrain coming from Andy Worski's mouth. Because obviously there's been some prehistoric drama here that he's had to hide from, have a panic attack over, but as you'll hear, he's back. And I need a time to think about. I need a time. I, I went to rehab, I'm sober now, guys. It's all gonna be better, I'm a changed man. I'm not longer gonna abort my son or 
snort box wine on air. Some things work on school, work on my life, but now I'm back. There's a music video heading out soon that was remixed by Octavio, someone I work with, who's an amazing artist, and... Octavio. Another man that he snaked. Another person he snaked. Okay. Yet another in a very long line of people that he's fucking snaked. Um. Yeah, I'm just going to show you this one, I think. This is a little palate cleanser. And it's purely, it's purely in my mix, just so we can all have a hearty laugh. Because it's got a pr pretty dark, as we've been keeping the memory of Andy Jr. alive. And shielding his eyes and ears from what his father's doing. But uh, this one's just pure fucking visceral laughter. It's fun. Remember, he murdered his own son to do this. Let that one never be forgotten. Now just let it sink in, let it sink in that he's wearing the diaper that Sinead bought for Andy Jr. before he was murdered. And he's wearing it and, and, and mocking, mocking the abortion. That's fucked. That's some fucked shit, bros. This is like when a murderer wears his fucking trophies, okay? This is like when uh, Norman Bates wears his mother's skin. This is sick. You know who didn't get to wear a diaper? There's a pregnant pause here. Pregnant pause that's going to get aborted because little Andy Jr. didn't get to wear a diaper. <laughs> little Andy Jr. didn't get to wear a diaper, but his dad did. His dad did. He, even, even when he was a grown-ass man. Mer Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, little Andy. Merry, Merry Christmas, little Andy Jr. Merry Christmas. Merry fucking Christmas. Instead of buying you gifts and patting you on the head and raising you to be his son, instead, uh, he's just going to wear your clothes. He's going to wear your diapers. He's going to act like a child. Because you're not allowed to act like a child because you're dead. Smothered in the fucking cradle. Merry Christmas, little Andy Jr. Merry Christmas. America first is inevitable. Matt, no! Cut Quicada. Cut Quicada.
I'm on the sugar free seven ups. I come from a planet a long way from here. Andy Jr. is going to join us for the chorus. I've not done this before, but I'll try it now. And love for a child. Merry Christmas, Leland Jr. Merry Christmas. Uh, there's yet more from my fucking archive. Uh, <clears throat> I'm ready to go with this one. Yeah, I'm ready to go with this one. Fuck it. I don't give a shit now. Um, th Number one, Andy, there was a time where we'd have refrained on this. Well, we'd have just ended it now because he was already dead. Worski, that is, not the child. I no longer care. There's no gentlemanly acts being conducted here with this child murdering coke fiend. Instead, gloves are off, my friend. Gloves are off. You here? How you all doing? You know what I love? Chicks. Love them. Everyone loves them. I like how on all their Facebook profiles, it's in every fucking picture they ever had. So you can check them out online. You're like, oh, yeah, it's fucking, it's hot, right? But the more you click, the younger and younger they get. And at a certain point, you're like, should I be jerking off to this anymore? I know, I, I know that sounds horribly, horribly creepy, but I'm a pretty creepy guy. Uh, I, I realized this the other day when I'm in the mall, I see all these hot fucking chicks everywhere. I'm just like, I, I say this out loud, like, I go, mmm. Like, I, I, I mmm out loud at chicks. It's horrible. And I'm also a starer. I can't stop fucking staring at chicks. And it's not even like a sexy stare, like a, I want to fuck you look, you know, like at the fuck stare. No, I don't, I fuck the chick. I, I rape them. It's just really uncomfortable. They're like, this guy, why is he doing this? This is horrible. Like, I feel all I'm just like, yeah. It's fucking, I don't know what, it's my brain, it's just messed up. I love chicks and I want eventually to marry someone in the future and have a family. But I'm fucking scared of fucking babies. Now, I'm not hor I'm not like, <laughs> like, no, I'm not horrified of babies. I just think they're fucking mean, rude, and selfish. Like, my cousin had a baby, brings her baby over to my fucking house, and there's... She was a small little baby, brunette, split hair, and I looked down at her. I'm like, hey, Emma, oh, you're so cute. And she's just like this. <laughs> like, oh, fuck you then. But I'm trying to be polite here, you fucking cunt. And you fucking... I know you're saying, oh, Andy, relax. It's a baby. It doesn't have cognitive thoughts. Well, how about this? What if... Would you trust a man that shit his pants and didn't fucking care... It's just like, oh, yeah, and you're like, what's that smell? It's just like, don't worry about it. They'll change it later. They'll change it. I would not trust that person. I don't care what age you are. I treat everyone equally. All right? 
Because fucking, it's bullshit. And also, everyone's always so impressed by, oh, she's so smart. Oh, look, she's looking in the, in the mirror, and she knows it's her in the mirror. Hey, newsflash, whores look in the mirror and know it's themselves. No, don't think that your grown-up jizz is fucking Einstein. Your grown-up jizz is nothing. It's a fucking blob. Ah, rude. And we're sitting at the table, right? She throws her fucking sippy cup at my head. And everyone laughs. Ah, oh my god. And then someone says at the table, Hey Andy, Emma should be the comedian. If I was on stage and I throw a fucking Budweiser bottle at someone's head, I'd be fucking murdered. The reason why he murdered you? Lil Andy Jr. is because he was afraid that you were going to upstage him. You were going to take away attention from him. Because he wants to continue acting like a child. And he'd be threatened by a little baby doing little baby things. That's fucked. That's seriously fucked. A grown man being jealous of a baby? That's fucked. Uh, if you doubt it, uh, look at him. This is a baby. A man who is threatened by his unborn son. Probably Lowest of the low. And probably raped by at least one third of the fucking bar or comedy club wherever I'm performing at. So don't think your baby's a comedian or Einstein. Your baby is just existing. It's right there. It's a vacuum for food and it expels out shit. That is what your fucking baby is. It's not special. It's the same. Every baby is the same. Jeez. Anyway, everyone, I hope you enjoyed my video. Um... Enjoy that one. Enjoy that one. He's, he's been saying this for years. All of this has been in plain sight. All of this has been existing in an archive, in the Goblinson vault, just like Master Milo. We've been squirreling it away for a rainy day. But, you know, uh, we're inside the mind of a, a murderer. The Ted Bundy tapes, akin to the Andy Worski tapes, is, is what this is. Um, we've got another one. Hey, what's up everyone? Andy Worski here. How you all doing? Hope you're all doing fantastic this evening. Just taking a stroll and thought I'd answer some of the Q&A uh, questions. How I, I lost you my virginity. Questions you all did, and I'm going to answer some of these. Uh, uh, if I don't finish them all, I'll do more on a second part. How did you lose your V-card, Andy? Kenye Pinkney asks. How did I lose my V-card? <laughs> this is terrible. This is not a flattering story, P.S. Because uh, when you were in high school, and you're in early high school, or an early teen, all we think about is just sex. Just fucking constant porn, masturbating all the time. And you think, yo, I've watched so much fucking porn, I want to be a pro at this, right? Fucking n opposite. Exact opposite. First of all, hanging out with some friends at a park, right? And a friend of a friend... Now, a few of you in chat have cottoned on to the fact that he's lying because the reality is Worski was molested and lost his virginity that way. But this is the story he's giving us, okay? This is the story he's giving us. Molested by his nanny, by the way. She brought all her friends from this all-girls school. I'm like, all-girls school? I'm getting laid. That's what I always said, but this time it actually was going to happen. Now, I'm going to just describe this girl for one second. Now, you think I'm going to find a girl who's, you know, you could bring home to your mother, at least to your friends, right? This girl that was hitting on me, she just, all she wanted was drugs. She was talking about, like, acid and ecstasy, and she's like, oh, yesterday at school I popped acid and did ecstasy at the same time. It's called hippie flipping. It's amazing. I'm like, wow, well, okay, that sounds great. I end up bringing her back to my buddy's house, right? And my friend, he lived pretty nearby. He was like, yeah, you can head in my room. The door's unlocked. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be grand. 
Uh, I asked one of my friends, and I, I'm like, yo, I'm heading, because she wants to come back with me. She's down for this. She's down to go, go back and possibly have sex. My friend's like, yo, rock on, man. Have fun, have fun. And at this point, I lied to my friends and told them I have already had sex before, which was a complete lie. Complete lie. And we all know the truth, right? We all know that stuttering Andy developed that stutter purely because he was raped by his nanny, molested many times by his nanny. He said as much many times over the years. But this is the uh, event of accounts that we're supposed to believe. This account of events uh, we're, we're supposed to believe. So was he lying then or is, is he lying now? Was he lying then or... Is he lying now, folks? Uh, but he, he handed me a condom. I'm like, I know how to put one of these on. Never tried once, because no one jerks off with a fucking condom on. Who jerks off with a fucking, fucking condom on? That's pretty creepy if you did. I've tried it before, but like, not like c continuously. Anyway, so I bring her back to my buddy's house. We walk into my friend's room, and here, here, here's me, a respectable guy. Here's the respectable person that I am. I bring her in, his bed's right there. Now you're thinking, I wanna fuck, I wanna fucking comfort, right? Me, I look over, I see his couch, and I remember saying these exact words, I remember, because my friends loved it. I went, I looked at her and went, you wanna couch it? And she went like, oh yeah, sh sure. I said, do you wanna couch it? I pretty much said, hey, you feel like fucking on the couch? Cause I feel like fucking on the couch. Now I remember this girl, um, she was, she was pretty attractive, you know. Uh, I, I, I mainly don't remember her face. I do remember her boobs. It was incredibly huge boobs. And me thinking in my head, like, yo, know, score. Here's the problem. I roll on the condom as best as possible. May I just say that condoms and me do not work well. Condoms and me do not work well. How many... Innocent women has this degenerate stealthily impregnated and then forced them to have an abortion. How 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 many? How many wombs has this man plundered? How many coat hangers does Worski have about his person to prevent this? the birth of his own children. Because I've got a strange feeling in me bones that Lil Andy Jr. Lil Andy Jr. is one of many. There's a great many of Worski's aborted children looking down at the heaven, from the heavens, having their eyes and ears shielded by St. Peter to prevent them from watching this. It's like putting a sleeping bag on my fucking dick. I, the dick feels the condoms like, oh, I'm taking that now. It's like pushing rope, you're pushing a fucking, a, a rope through a fucking hole. It was, I'm trying to shove my dick and it just won't fit inside. Cause apparently she's a virgin too. And I'm trying to, and I'm like, is this how sex feels like? I didn't know it was a hole you had to hook it in and go and like strategically magic. On porn, it just looks like you're just fucking so easy, right? In real life, I'm like, this is not fun. My my, my triceps are shaking. I'm like, I can't fucking hold. I'm falling and shit. It's just miserable, miserable. But um, it, we finished up. Up as much as possible. I don't even think I actually had sex, to be honest. He... 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 What? What? All lies, by the way. Just complete stuttering lies from Andy Worski. But... Just wanted to, to play that one. Because what we're trying to do here, there's a reason why we led with Fuentes and Milo. Because what's going to happen is, the Kino Casino is going to come back. And it's going to do a show on Fuentes and Milo and how degenerate they are. And how anyone who's going to vote for Kanye West is being sold a lie because they're degenerates. And they're going to present themselves, PPP and Worski, as the better alternative for all of these disaffected groipers. The better alternative. 
the better alternative, folks, to Nick Fuentes, Milo and all of this. There's no degrees of separation. There's no grass is greener on the other side. If you're genuinely one of Nick's audience and you've been watching Nick and you're disaffected, if you see Sanctuary on the Kino Casino, where Metica Masochist, a tranny, has been bankrolling it, where Andy Worski, a baby-killing coke fiend, and PPP, a man who's the living embodiment of gluttony and every sin, do you see them as a better alternative? If, if I were Nick and, and I had those people that genuinely saw people like Andy Worski as entertaining people for which to life raft onto, I'd be saying goodbye. Farewell. Thanks, but no facts. You can, you can go off over there, Metica Masochist. You can be a degenerate with them. That's fine. But that's honestly how they present their arguments. They do the moral grandstanding. We've watched enough of the Kino Casino to know that's exactly what they do. Nick's a homosexual. Oh, he's selling a lie to them. Well, look at yourselves in a fucking mirror. Why don't you? Honestly, and I'm no fan of fucking Milo Yiannopoulos. We've made lots of content on the guy over the years. But I would honestly put Milo Yiannopoulos as slightly morally better than Andy fucking Worski. And that says a fucking hell of a lot, doesn't it? That says a hell of a lot. When you're below Milo Yiannopoulos on a totem pole of who's got the lowest morals. That says a fucking lot. Um, this one. Hey, what's up, everyone? Andy Worski here. How you all doing? Hope you're all doing fantastic. I've missed you all. I have a question, a little predicament, if you will. That I, I just want, I can't, I don't think so, but is it gay? Okay, look, me and my friend were hanging out. We're playing soccer indoor field. We're, I, I'm defense. He's trying to attack. And my hand swanked on his dick a little bit. Just a little bit. And he's like, yo, dude, that was gay. And I'm like, it's not, how is it gay? Do you think he's gay? If my hand accidentally swipes on his dick, okay. Yes, is my answer to that. Hard yes. Not even a little bit, just yes, that's, that's gay. It's gay, it's gay, it's gay. But remember, this is a man who, uh, this is a man who if Nick Fuentes did this, it'd be a six hour show, let that one. Let that one permeate in your mind. That would be a six-hour show if Nick Fuentes said anything resembling the words that he's just spoken. Maybe, maybe the second time, okay, maybe, like, he could perceive it as that. The first time, no. Second time, it's not my fault that he was hard. I mean, if he's, if, if his cock is throbbing in the shower and I'm just staring at it and I'm just looking and he's staring at my cock, it's like just two friends, right? Two bros being bros. You know, fist bump each other, maybe touch helmets, whatever. We're just hanging out. He comes over the other night, right? Pull up. Whatever, we're just hanging out. Whatever, we're just hanging out. Okay. Now, you will all remember the Catboy date that Fuentes went on with Catboy Cami. And something along those lines was said about, you know, just kissing. Stuff like that. And everyone went to town on it and said, that's gay. Okay, you know who went to town on that as well? Andy Worski went to town on it for six hours every week on his Kino Casino show. Up the futon, open it up, lay down, watch some notebook, fucking tickle each other's balls with our fingers, maybe our tongues. It's just, we want to just fucking hang out, be friends, and not be considered gay. Like, is it gay if, you know, Maybe he spreads his cheeks and I, I, I fucking, maybe, take a, take a lick, maybe. That's gay. That's gay, Andy. If he spreads his cheeks and you maybe take a lick, that's gay. That's gay. That's real fucking gay. Uh, I, I don't know what to say to that. Uh, genuinely. 
Because I know for a fact that if Fuentes had said even half of the shit that was just said there, we'd be in for 12 hours of Medica Masochist for six gorillion dollars. Says Nick's gay. Nick's a homo. Nick's a gay lord. We need to bring that one back, by the way, because that's, that's an insult that, that has sort of been lost to the sands of time. You're a gay lord. Gay lord. Um, but, but I know for a fact that if Worski had done... If Fuentes had done anything resembling 10 minutes in Worski's life, if Fuentes had done 10 minutes in Worski's shoes, then that would be content that they'd mull over and pick apart like vultures for the next six months on a twice-weekly basis on a rake back and on a Kino casino as they morally grandstand about how much better they are as men and human beings. It's Kino Dogme, 2007. Brought to you by its torchbearer. is being woven here, folks. It's a tapestry to rival the Bayo tapestry. We're weaving Kino Dog Bay 2007. We've learned a lot from the old masters. We've learned how to scorch earth a baby-killing coke fiend. We've definitely learned those tricks of the trade. From the old greats like War Corpse and Acelieri and Demonius X, who we're going to cover later, by the way. Um, I've still got content for this show. It's more than just Worski. Believe it or not, there's more than just this decadent to cover. So <clears throat> this one is, well, well, we'll get into it. Thank you for coming. I appreciate the time. Anytime, my friend. Anytime. Good, good. So how's your day so it far? It happens, you know, like, I, you, you say welcome to the interview, 
and I already know that you are just happy. You're ecstatic. Like I see it in your face right now. Um, I'm just gonna go ask you a couple questions. Answer it to the best of your abilities. I my my abilities above average. Are they? So my ability is above average. My ability is above average. My ability is above average. Spoken from the mouth of Andy Worski. I don't know, X, X to doubt that one. So I could probably answer them. Okay. Like with ease. Yeah. How was, uh, you, you've had your own YouTube channel, right? I can see that you got a bunch of subscribers on here. Yeah, yeah. Well. It's awesome. How is popularity on YouTube changed your life? I, you know, you say popularity and people throw around the word, oh, being popular on YouTube. I feel more like fame. Mm -hmm. I'm like above, you know, famous. Above go, famous. Yeah, like above. You know, wow, that's, that's a big it's thing. almost that's, overwhelming that's at times. And people, like, they message me and they, they, and they go, you aren't famous, Andy. Out of your head right now, get it out of your head, you're not famous. Because it's YouTube. You have 16,000 subscribers. Then I check their YouTube channel. You have 2,000. Now, I want to get real here and reveal to you a bit of what's going on with the writing in here. Okay? A lot of these clips are sort of done ironically, aren't they? You sort of might be thinking, oh, Andy's just joking, clearly. And that's the defence, isn't it? He's just joking. Okay, in all, in all of the clips we've been showing of Worski from the Goblin's Archive, he's just joking. Okay. Um, you know who's also just joking when they're picking him apart? 12-hour streams every night. And they're reacting deadpan to, to clear jokes. Do you know who's also joking when he's doing all that? Nick Fuentes. Isn't he? So what's the difference in, in doing this? Huh? What, what, where's, where's the difference? Where's the line? I'm the greatest writer of them all. How's the fish tank? They are the bird shit that hits you and you're like, fucking bird shit. I actually shit. think about my fucking content. That. Let that sink in. 2000. Oh. How about you suck my balls? Excellent. I don't know. Okay, perfect. I think I have enough of that question. I'm but fame, them. you know, you have to take fame and then you have to, like, see it as a whole. And I am whole slightly famous. Okay. Famous. 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 Above. Got it. Two points. Got it. Okay, I wrote, that. I wrote that down. I wrote that down. Where do you see yourself in five years? Five. Like, five... Five years, just where do you see yourself like, in your career? From decades? right now? No, five years. Five years. Years, not decades, years. Years. 365 days in a year from today. It was that. You've just blown his fucking mind. Interview has just blown the buddy's mind. It was 365 times five. I don't. I'm trying to, like, you know, calculate it today. That doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. Just answer the question. So like five years from today, or five years from the end of this year, Let's just and say we're starting fresh. From today. So, this is the reason why we're showing it, because then we can present where he is now, after those five years. You see, folks, you see how we're writing this. The Bard himself. Okay, from, from today, right? What's, what's the time today? It's February, February uh, 26th. Five years, okay. So I'm, I'm thinking five years from now, cause it, you know with the fame thing, you know, the whole being famous, remember that whole like bit I was on about? Okay. Being famous, in five years, drugs probably will drugs. be on the table. You know, right. on the glass table, if you ask me, cause you know, cocaine, right? Cocaine's one hell of a drug. See, but I'm hoping that I'm like every other actor or musician who heads to rehab where I just stick on cocaine because they say cocaine is a gateway drugs to harder drugs. Maybe, who knows, five years down the line, I'm at the Oscars, right? Receive, you know, two whatever Oscars. Just and then to receive an award. Huh? That's, that's a pretty big comment. No, but that's, see, that's like four years. I had already oh, received my years. first, like, 
Golden Globe. Now I'm like, I'm, you know, like you know how like the industry works, right? So you, I'm at the after party. Okay, like I see Leo, you know, walk in, and I'm just, hey, Leo. He's like, yo, there's an after party. He, now he's not talking about Leo Loves DiCaprio. He's talking about Leo Pirate, of course. I just work like that, Ed. You might not win an Oscar in four years. Even if I don't, just trying to. Leo tell would be like, like, he'll see me like, uh, maybe pr presenting. Maybe I'm like, and the best male actor goes to, you know, like just a small presenter part, not like the whole Oscars itself. But Leo, back to Leo, he sees me. He, hey, Andy, there's a after Sorry, party. Sir, I got confused. Who's this Leo guy? You, you Leonardo DiCaprio. You didn't explain that. Leo. Everyone knows Leo. You, you, how do you, see, how do you I don't you understand. Working with Leonardo DiCaprio, though. I'm not understand. working with him. I see him at the Oscars. Oh. He sees me, you know. I have my drink of water. I have to pee. I see. It's commercial break. It's fine. Whatever. I stand up. Hey, yo, Andy. Leo, pu he pulls me over. Yo, Andy. There's an after party, at you know, like the, you know, you know, like the hall or whatever they have at the Oscar place. I'm like, I'm down. I'll show up. I'm at the after party. Me, Leo, you know, George, having a discussion probably about the universe. Kate Winslet, like holding a needle. Holding a needle. Hey, Andy. There's a little heroin party in the bathroom. Wh who, who's to say I, I don't say yes? At the Oscars, receive my awards. At the after party, you know, with some big names. I'm a little bit bigger at that time. Five years. That's a lot of time to start building myself up. Five years. It's a lot of time to start building yourself up, isn't it? A lot of time there to start building yourself up to that, okay? Now, the beauty of Andy Worski and his career on the internet is he's been around long enough that we can jump five years ahead in time, instantaneously. And we can show you exactly what Worski's doing right now, five years later. What's this? What's this? There's color everywhere. What's this? There's white things in the air. This is advertising <laughs> Disney Plus to me. But we've got a musical number lined up for this time skip. What's this? Okay. So, he saw himself in five years just on cocaine. Not on any other stuff that because he, he classes cocaine as a gateway drug. No, nothing harder than that. He also saw himself as presenting the Oscars. He also saw himself as doing Blow with Kate Winslet, George Clooney, and Leonardo DiCaprio. Saw himself doing that in five years. And five years is a long time. You can build yourself up in that time to do that. Shall we see where he is right now, folks? Five years later, five years down the line. Andy Worski. There he is, look. In his dad's office still. Dreams, hopes, gone. And he's not presenting the Oscars with George Clooney and Leonardo DiCaprio. He's with a 144P. PPP. Oh, esoteric shaggyism is this guy. He's, he's doing a show? With a £600 slideshow. A PowerPoint presentation. Life hit him hard, folks. Uh, anyway, esoteric shaggyism is pissed off. The cog won't credit his clips and his stealing from him. Uh, and so he's been filing copyright claims on Cog's It's tough. Channel, which has led to Cog no longer being able to use his main channel. So now he's back to the cognitive thought. It's channel. rough. I saw his stream from today. Stream for four hours. The in total viewership. 355 views that I checked. Now that's not five. Five, five. five years, it's oh, a long time to build yourself up. Total. How long? 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 Total. How
Shall we get nastier, folks? Shall we go in for the real kill? Five years! Supposed to be presenting the Oscars, eh? Doing blow with Kate Winslet, George Clooney, Leonardo DiCaprio. Here's Andy Worski's TikTok, where he reacts to children. No half measures. This is what he's doing when there's no Kino Casino. This is literally what he's doing when there's no Kino Casino. He's trying to be a TikTok megastar, like a teenage girl. I'm sorry, little Andy Jr. But this is the reason why you were killed. Just look at him, by the way. All the cocaine, all of the hard drugs, the boxed wine, the alcoholism. Look at him contrasted to to genuine youth and hope. Why? This man has no business on TikTok, on this platform. Look at how, by the way, he's tagged his TikToks: hot girl, funny comedy jokes. This is a child. These are children in a bathtub. Give your head a fucking hard shake, Andy Warson. Five years later, Okay, so I think that ends the segment on Andy Worski. Now I'm just going to do my segment on Demonious X because here's here was the script that I compiled for tonight. You know, th these are the Godwinson notes. This is how I always do it. Um, little trip into my writer's room here. Right, and so this item is last on the agenda, Demonious X. By the way, I don't need a fucking writer's room to compile shit for me. I can do, I think we've been streaming for just shy of three hours now on mere sentences. That's Kino Dogway 2007. That's how an Antediluvian king does it, my friends. You with me? You with me? Because as long as you've got a creative vision in your head, you can go places. And no one's gone more places than Demonius X. So, Demonius X, we covered him in one of our videos recently on Antediluvian Kings. Um, and his channel was sort of sub-1,000 subscribers, but he's had a Godwinson bounce, bizarrely. And uh, Demonius X, after a while, so it, was, it had been a year since he uploaded, okay? Uh, now he's come back as of 20 hours ago. Now he's come back as of 20 hours ago. And uh, we'll, we'll cover the Antediluvian king known as Demonius X. But I did have something that I've absolutely forgotten about that I really, really, really wanted to, uh, to play in, to end out the Andy Worski stuff. So um, this is how we're ending the Worski segment. And hopefully, hopefully this will be the musical accompaniment as Andy Worski in that dark room there holds the shotgun in his mouth and presses the trigger. Hopefully this is what's going to sing Andy into his next phase. And it's a little old lady here on a guitar.
so late. I went to the drugstore, I peed on the strip. I waited ten minutes, yeah, that's what I did. Ten minutes later, I got a plus sign, and you know what that means. Jesus Christ, I'm just seventeen. There's no plan A, there's no plan B. Unless you know you got the do me. You better not fuck in Texas. Drywall, gummy, pretzel, bye bye Anox. No half measures. Okay, so that's uh, the Warski segment concluded, and we'll move on to Demonius X right now. So now he's uh, he's uploaded again after a, a good while, about eighteen months. Um, it's the Goldmanson lift. He says one thousand five hundred subs. Why this channel is dead? Uh, I think there were some autists in the comments that told him what had happened and broke the joke, which is a bit tragic, really. Um, he's got a loyal community, quite frankly, a very loyal community. I might have to search the comments, to be honest. Okay. I tell you why, brother, says the Forsaken Wanderer. It's because the Kino King Godwinson, he talked about you on one of his streams, I forget which. Come back to YouTube. We need more masculine men like you. We need testosterone. We need warriors of the eight virtues. Uh, there's four replies on this. Shall we see what's found within? Is he a lefty? I don't know of him. As the only streams I watch is Joel from Vine Source for the memes and his laugh. Therapy for me, it's dark, it's tough. Lefties and I are enemies. <coughs> I may not be able to beat them, but I sure as well wouldn't join them, based. Even if a gun is put to my head, what a king. Forsaken warrior, he's not a lefty, but he doesn't really talk about politics. He mostly just talks about internet law and internet drama. He was using your channel as an example of the old style of making videos, which is something he misses dearly. Just making me sound like I'm completely mentally ill. Like I completely fucking lost my marbles there. I appreciate the kudos from him then, Demonius X says. I've never personally liked flashy, dumb videos. They have the looks, but severely lack substance. True that. That's a true teaching from an antediluvian king on the Kino Dogma 2007. Call me lazy and that's fine. Point of videos is either watch or listen and be entertained or informed. If this was my job, I guess I'd have to learn how to edit videos like that and be like the dull sheep out there, the dull sheep. However, I'm not that man. I don't like it. Okay, shall we get into Demonius X's video? Demonius X has returned from the wilderness. He's come down from the mountain. So here I am once again. Not for anything particularly important or any kind of reason. Just having a hard time. 
hard time understanding something here. I just realized I looked on my subscriber count here on this channel, and I'm up to 1,500. Why? I'm, I don't do anything on this channel anymore. It's over. You know, you got so many vloggers out there that have the green screen bullshit and the special effects. You got the ones that actually have good coherent talking skills when it comes to certain aspects of both the political and secular and religious spectrums. I don't have any of that. I'm just some 40-year-old fat fuck behind a camera right now. There's nothing special about me. Why are people subscribing? I don't get it. Because you're an antediluvian king, Demonius X. And you don't need the special effects or the flashy green screen in order to entertain. And that's the whole point of the Kino Dogma 2007, is it not? This channel is pretty much dead in the water. I, I've been working on my Let's Play channel. Right now I'm on a break. But I just want to make an update video because I like to throw you all a bone once in a great while. So here we go. So what has changed in my life since that old drunken debacle where I was just completely just flustered at life and literally on the edge of existence. We won't get into that because it's very dark. Just everything was going wrong and everything always goes wrong. But that's besides the point. Well, first of all, I have a part-time gig and I will not explain where I have a part-time gig at. Shock horror. Isaleb has job. Shock horror. Good Lord. Shock horror. Isaleb won't be f shivering in a... Canadian wilderness, in a cabin somewhere. Because he can't grift money f uh, from Metica Masochist to a tranny that, that Wolski masturbates to. Shock horror. Because I know how the leftist cancel culture likes to fuck people over on their jobs. So I will tell you a little bit, though. I sometimes work from home, sometimes I work out in the field. And it's a very rewarding job, and I like it very much. And it's good pay, or decent pay, rather. It's 15 an hour. You know, it, it helps. And um, a lot of people understand my, you know, my mental disabilities and whatnot, and they work with me on it. So that's good. Because a lot of jobs won't. They'll just throw you or kick you to the curb if they find out that you're, you know, you got screws loose up, up, upstairs. So. Do you hear that? Do you hear that? And I, I want two co-hosts of a show called The Kino Casino to let that sink in. It don't matter who you are, really. You can have the mental disabilities. You, you can even be just for, fucking completely handicapped or disabled. You can even be Demonious X and still get a job. Still do an honest day's work and get a job. You don't have to blame Godwinson for coming along and calling your show shit and saying you're going to live in poverty and die in a Canadian wilderness. and you've, you've ruined everything. You don't have to do that. You can just man up and get a job like Demonious X PPP. You can even be a 600 pound Canadian lesbian and get a job. For real. And the people that I work for appreciate the hard work and dedication I have to the said field. So, yeah, I'm working part time. So, yeah, there's that. Um, secondly, the political. Oh boy, um, there's a lot of things I could touch base on, but, you know, it's like being a dead horse. You guys know how I feel about Joe Biden. He's a piece of shit. He's old. He's useless. He's this country's worth mistake. Based. He constantly says, oh, I'm going to help the American people. I'm going to help the American people. And then Ronald Reagan taught us that one of the things you should be most scared of is when a president or a political figure comes up on stage or on whatever way of media and says, and I quote, if they say, I am from the government and I'm here to help, that should scare you more than anything. And uh, uh, Pedo Joe has done just that. Pedo I don't Joe. Like pedocrats. I don't like lefties. Pedo Joe and the Pedocrats. Demonius X. A lot of teachings from Demonius X. He's got a lot of wisdom, you know. And whilst he has been A-logged over the years, and, you know, people made like a, a, a 3D sculpture of his face. like made a 3D sculpture of his face and just A-logged the fuck out of him.
trying to get one with the full face. Hang on. Here he's like sculpting the chins. You know, whilst the A-logging of Demonius X was true artistry, he could have just gone away and shivered to death in a Canadian wilderness and not, not really changed things up and blamed other people for things going wrong. But instead, he got a part-time job and figured it all out. So he looked at the world and went, I hate P Pedo Joe and the pedocrats. Now he's enjoying the Godwinson lift. We've got him... I think we got him 500 subs or just over 500 subs. And now he's back making content again. An Antediluvian king has returned. That's what we like to see. That warms the cockles of our heart. For real. That's all we've got for this show, I think. I think that's all we've got. Do you love got. Gantt charts? I don't love Gantt charts. Here's how easily you can build one in click. Let's map out the yeah, that's the show. Uh, I'll just have a look at the live chat. We might do a Q&A. Or we might just end it now. If I can turn back time If I can find a way I take back those words that have hurt you You stay I don't know why I do <laughs> Rubber Johnny says Godwinson breathes life into the world And he snuffs it out in the womb Best comment in chat thus far Did you like Splatoon 3? I didn't play it Sorry Sargoy I could give two shits about Splatoon Or Splatoon and its sequels It's a game for children did Andy have sex? Uh, did Andy travel to the USA to have sex with a trans person? I don't know if she was trans, but he flew out during the Kino Casino heyday, just after the Foot Ralph Festival, I believe. Um, flew out there, they went to a movie, I think they watched The Batman, and that's what traumatised Andy over the Batman film. Um, she didn't pull out, she refused to even kiss him, and he had to sleep outside or in a hotel somewhere so it was pretty rough for Andy and he came back and cried about it on Discord it was very funny if I could reach the stars and eat samurai I'd give it all to you Job the Nod says oh that makes sense that's why he hates the movie that's true. And if someone can link the Batman review, you'll go into that. I think it's behind the paywall somewhere, but they reviewed Batman together, him and PPP. And uh, I know the behind the scenes on that, and I can dissect that. So if someone wants to breach the paywall and deliver the Batman review to me before we end the stream, that's where we'll go with the content. Will the casino survive into January? It's not survived now, it's dead. On the biggest news night in Nick Fuente's history, they were nowhere to be seen. PPP was seething and coping on Discord, pissing and shitting himself. Unable to even bat away a, a take from Ralph. A real one says, I might just unsub from PC, KC. It's tough.
Okay, I want to do the Batman review. I want to do the review of the Batman review. And I need to remember what that channel was on BitChute that archived all of the Gumroad content. Can someone please tell it to me? I know it was Plunder or something. And I imagine the Batman review is on there. So please, do your job, chat. Paywall Pilferer, okay? And what was it? People's Populist Press Paywall Pil Pilferer? Or was it Kino Casino Paywall Pilferer? PPP Paywall Pilferer. Thank you. Thank you, Job the Nup. Redeemed. We've got it. Now we just have to find the Batman review, okay? Um, and as we do so, I think... I think... I love this, but this is Kino... Kino Kino Dog made this song. And this takes me back to a time when things were just a lot better. Oh, I don't know if it's here in the archive. I don't know if the paywall pilferer managed to pilfer the Batman review. They did! <laughs> it's an hour long. We've been going for a few hours already. There it is, look. Maybe I've just got to take in a bit of the life motivation that was imparted by the Ralpha male. Maybe I've just got to Fuck it, let's go. I'm ready. PPP reviews the Batman. Okay, folks, welcome to PPP's first impressions slash review of the Batman. The Batman film coming out came out in 2022. Now, <clears throat> the law behind this is PPP wanted to review Batman with Warski. Okay. This was going to be like part of like the Survivor watch thrown into the mix of 90 Day Fiance. But Worski, <laughs> Worski had obviously prior to that flew out to, I think it was Texas. It was somewhere in the deep south anyway, to meet this woman, um, this catfish. And he paid for the cinema tickets to go and watch the Batman on the hopes that he'd get some action, some crumb. He got nothing, nothing, and that's why he hates the Batman, and that's why he refused to review Batman with PPP. So here's PPP having to do it himself. It brought back too many traumatic memories. Come on, bitch, shoot. You fucking rubbish Batman's platform. These titles are going to be confusing to look back upon, aren't they? Oh, 1989 versus this one. Whatever the fuck. Anyway, I'm going to give my thoughts on this quick. Andy hasn't seen it yet. I've been trying to get Andy to fucking see it. But, you know, the Andy coat. doesn't go out to the theater and shit. You know, he waits till he can get a cam copy. There are some cam copies out there. But the lies and the cope. <laughs> Andy just hasn't seen it. <laughs> He's just not seen it. He's waiting for a cam yeah, copy. Be on his streaming his F movies or whatever. I don't know. So I'm doing it, and then I'll do a discussion with Andy later, probably on what he thought about it. Oh dear. Before I get into the spoilers oh dear. on this movie, because I'm gonna dissect the whole thing and go over different aspects of it. I'm gonna say, <laughs> if you are a Batman fan. If you like Batman, the Batman you know, review. If you've seen all the movies, or you've read comic books, or watched the cartoon. You know, if you like like Batman, and you know you're gonna see it anyway, you may as well just go. This is what you're paying for, by you know, the way. Low effort reviews on the Batman. 
It's not fucking horrible, fucked up, terrible. I, I, I came in with very low expectations, okay? As long as you come in... Worski came in with very high expectations, didn't he? Worski came in with the highest of expectations that he was going to get laid after flying out all the way to Texas, taking literally a week off the show. That's the week that um, Fagmenko came on the first time and they had Persip and uh, Brian on, right? And they grilled Fagmenko the first time. That's that week. In that week, Worski was AWOL. They still did the show without him. And they made him a shit ton of money. And uh, he was watching Batman in the theatre trying to get laid. <laughs> she said no. She didn't even kiss him. Wouldn't even kiss the guy. She wouldn't even let him into the house. He had to like stay at a, like a travel lodge hotel or some shit. Then he was like seething and crying about it on Discord. Now he didn't see them cry about it to us. He seethed and cried about it to, uh, to his fat snake co-host who told us all about it. Laughing. Remember that, Andy? He was, like, betraying all of your confidences, confidences every single step of the way. You know, if you're a we know everything, fan, Andy. If not, if you're not super into Batman and you don't care that much, just wait until it comes out on HBO Max or on streaming or whatever on April 19th. It's only, like, a month wait. <clears throat> so you may as well just wait. But it is nice to see this is the first movie I've seen in a fucking theater in a long, long fucking time because of all the COVID bullshit. So it was nice to actually go to the theater. So my overall thought... You can see why he's so deflated, because he's been trying to corral Andy to do the review with him. But <laughs> Andy's too traumatized. <laughs> so PPP's having to do this bitch-made review. <laughs> on it. You know, I think it was pretty good. You know, that's all I'll say before I go into spoilers in each aspect of the movie. But anyway, we're going to start going into spoiler territory now. The runtime of the movie has been a serious concern for people. It's three fucking hours long. To me, it didn't feel the three hours. I wasn't bored at any point during the movie. I felt like, you know what, fuck it was a good use of the running time. I actually wish it was fucking longer. Now, I know a lot of people aren't like me. They don't like a fucking three-hour movie. Or No, he was genuine. I liked the film. I thought the Batman was pretty good. It was a great film. Um, and he thought it was a good film. But obviously, he's just been trying to corral Worski in a Discord for like four hours. Try and get him to help him help him out with this review. And instead, we've got this low-effort PPP. Whatever, but I... I wanted to see as much of this take of Batman as I could. I wanted to see as much of this universe as I could. And so for me, the three hours, it was a pretty easy set for being fucking three hours. Did it need to be three hours? Maybe not. But honestly, I'm happy that it was fucking three hours. And it didn't, it didn't feel long to me. But one thing I wish it was, was rated R. I don't understand, because this is clearly not a movie for children, okay? At this point, they're starting to make these movies use these comic book properties that originally were meant for children, and they're, you know, they're turning them into movies. The comic books were originally meant for children. God, this is so retarded. But, I mean, should the Batman really have been rated R? Uh, I don't think so. I, I don't think so. Um, yeah, we can do, I mean, there's lots of stuff on the paywall that, that is gold, really. I mean, a lot of it is PPP having to carry the, carry the monetized content that they've hidden behind the paywall because Borsky was too busy in the gym. Um, but the best one... Okay, yeah, let's fucking do it. So this is him talking about Fuentes and not the Sonic 2 movie. I want to briefly, I'm going to talk about this on the rake back tonight, but I want to touch on the danger of what's going on with Nick Fuentes right now and why his behavior is very reckless and is very dangerous for everybody. See, now bear in mind his co-host is a baby killing coke fiend. Okay, just let, just don't forget that one. Used to be 
be that there were mores, like these social mores, this unwritten code, which he calls gay and faggy. But I think it was important that we have some baseline morality as to how- There's a reason why this is hidden on a gum road that no one sees. Because if he said this on the show with Worski next to him, he'd be torpedoed and sandbagged by Worski, the ultimate degenerate, the man, the king of decadence. So let that one sink in also. How shit is conducted. Now, it used to be online back in the day when I was a mere lad and I was watching Acillary and Arshveen and all these fuckers that... You see that? He can't talk about the Antediluvian kings on the Kino Casino. He has to hide on the gum road like a bitch and do it there. E-bagging was bad. That grifting was bad. That making money on the internet was bad. But the temptation was so great. And the money and the rewards were so great in terms of making... The richness of this is that this is literally hidden on a gum road. That people have to pay to watch this. Money that... That changed. Everybody started grifting and then Jim started grifting and then it all became acceptable and it was normalized. The same sort of thing is now happening with flagging. Flagging back in the day was the ultimate sin. Why? It still is. Just because Daddy Jim. <laughs> Why do these people define their lives on what Jim does? If, if, if Jim were to jump off a cliff, would they genuinely do so? I know Gator would, but would, would PPP do so? Like, it's retarded. You, you can keep your own code of morality and your own ethics consistent. It's not dependent on what Daddy Jim does. And if it is, that's not a code of morality or ethics. That's just copying what an internet dad does. Uh, I mean, what the fuck? Every creator knows how shitty it is to ha get hit now, with a copyright claim. Every creator knows how shitty it is to be hit by... You know why he's doing this on this gum road that Worski can't see and he can't do it on air with Worski? Because Worski flags people down for using his copyright and has done for years and years and years. Don't just take my word for it. Take Say No to Gino's word for it. The reason why the videos I showed you earlier from the Gobinson Vault aren't available online anymore is because every time they're re-uploaded, Worski hits them with a copyright claim. Okay? But here he is, out of Worski's eyesight, saying how he really feels. They've seen it from other creators that they've loved have got hit with copyright claims, the videos have been taken down, or they've been flagged down for community guideline violations, some real faggot soy shit. And so when people got caught flagging, like mundane Matt, like Andy they Worski. got crucified. They got nails driven through their hands and through their feet. Just like in the past when Amazing Atheist begged for a computer. He had nails driven through his hands and through his feet. He was propped up on a cross about that. Jargo got put up on a cross for flagging. But so did Wolski. now is it's just we've let it, we've let the standards go away. We let the standards go lax. And now flagging is okay. Ralph openly flagged. Wolski openly flagged. openly flagged. And people like Jim swept it under the rug and everybody just let it go because it was in their financial interest to let it happen. And we as a community didn't care. Well, now, you know, Nick Fuentes has decided, you know what? I am going to use flagging as a weapon. I'm going to openly use it as a weapon. The hypocrisy here. Nick Fuentes has just decided to flag. worski has been doing it for years. Worski's the master of flagging. Worski taught Jarbo how to flag. Like, literally, that's the law. That Jobbo told me that. So, it's just retarded. <laughs> Hypocrisy. Now Nick's doing it. Now it's a talking point that we have to hide on a gum road behind a paywall. Because we can't say it on air because Worski will just sandbag the take and say, Flagging for beef. Worski flagging admirer for one gorillion dollars. To silence dissent. To silence critique. 
And we saw on that call with Flamenco all of those cozy faggots laughing. Ha ha ha. They cost Flamenco $500. Ha ha ha. So they're going to normalize flagging. And then flagging will be okay. Right? It's all going to be okay. It's going to be perfectly fine. But they're already starting to normalize swatting. Because you see, the rationale for the flagging is, well, we got flagged and we got deplatformed, so we have a right to do it to everybody else. Anybody who disagrees with us, anybody who makes fun of us, anybody who dares to dissent, we have a right to censor them. We'll smash them into the fucking ground, right? Is he talking about Nick Fuentes, or is he talking about Andy Worski, his co-host? Same fucking difference. Um, there's more on the gum road. We might just show you a couple more, and then we'll end the stream. Uh, <laughs> no, we won't. We won't. We won't. Because it's all just 90 Day Fiancé. And Australian Survivor reviews. For four hours. That's what they're doing in the meantime. Well, you're all sat there waiting like chumps with your dick in your hands, waiting for them to go live. Talk about Nick Fuentes' content. Especially Nick Fuentes, Kanye West, Donald Trump and Milo Yiannopoulos. No, they're, they're watching... 90 Day Fiancé, and giving in-depth reviews of it for four hours every fucking night, and putting it behind a paywall for the pay pigs like Metica Masochist, who we'll just remind you, looks like... looks like that. Metica Masochist. Do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do. Deary me. Deary me. Um, yeah, I think that's the show. What's this? What's this? It's, it's another advert for Disney Plus. There's, white things in the air. Sir, There's nothing on Disney Plus that I would want to see. So at all. But there we go, ladies and gentlemen. That's the show. We've tied together all of the narrative threads, the storyline, and we've just finished with a real good cap of events. Tied it all together in a nice little bow, just in time for Christmas. It is what it is. Christ is king. Nick Fuentes is going to be the next, not the next, but a future American president. Let that sink in. Nick Fuentes. A president of the United States at some point in time. And you know what? I kneel, Fuentes Sama. I kneel. A flawless victory. With the assistance of Master Milo, Kanye West, Donald Trump. To the point where all of the Fuentes A-logs are f, -f, f felted Unable to even master a defense. To even muster up the courage to go live and go scorched earth. Or give some sort of coke take. Because there ain't no coke take to give. Because Fuentes is won an immaculate victory. I'll see you in the next one. Juice!